Another mega fight week is on deck, ladies and gentlemen, and we're going to get the festivities and party started off right. What's going on, everybody? Yours truly, Jay Smoothie. I'm here to give you the commentary for one Friday Fights number 14 slash one Lumpany 14. And on the docket, of course, we only have one MMA fight, everybody. One MMA fight and 11, yes, 11 Muay Thai fights the way we like it. And folks, it is going to be an amazing card. Shout out to No Way Jose, who is officially first in here. Good to see Drunk Vigo trolling. And of course, Chase Bishop jumping in as well. Chase Bishop looks like he's ready to go. Looks like everybody else is ready to go. Folks, only one MMA fight, 11 Muay Thai fights. Good morning to you, No Way Jose. Great to see you, my dude. But hey, only one MMA fight on this docket, and I like it. Everything else is just strictly Muay Thai, so it's going to be in an entertaining card. Uh, and if anything, folks, I think this is a great way to start off the weekend, considering that we have we have a UFC card Friday. I mean, Saturday we have uh, Glory making its return Saturday, and then of course we have uh, BKFC number forty one with Mike Perry, Luke Rockhold, Chad Mendez, Eddie Alvarez, and of course. Uh, in the main of well, actually, one of the main fighters on there will be Ben Rothwell, uh, taking on somebody. So this is what we got, folks. Only one uh, MMA fight. Everything else, Muay Thai, flyweight, bunch of catch weights. Good God, catch weights all over the damn place. Sexon is going to be one of the main prelim fighters, actually, for the uh, Friday fight portion before they hit the lumpeny portion. So that should be pretty good. Sex on, we've seen quite a bit. The main event is also going to be familiar. Uh, let's see. Let's go back up a little bit. Yeah, main event's going to be familiar. We've seen Chorfa quite a bit. Uh, hasn't really done well lately, though. He won his last fight by split after losing two in a row. Started off on Friday fights kind of, you know, shady. Finally got a win. I think one championship has a lot of faith in this guy because they're giving Chorfa tons of fucking main events. They're putting him in feature spots all over these cards. Of course, Jin Select looking for a big win after Kong Thorny finished him uh, in the last fight. Of course, everybody, you can watch along with me on one's YouTube channel. Event just went live over there. Let's see, ours working man of the business. I'm definitely not, but thank you. I'm just one of them. Uh, are there any weird names on this car like Goku Black or Sailor Moon? <laughs> oh, yeah, there's a good amount. Just to kind of go through some. Uh, let's see. Doraemon is actually the first, like, crazy name. This lady's name I like because it's female Scarface Francisca Vera. Uh, let's see who else. Uh, Sh wait, Shalarm? Yeah, Shalarm, I would say is one. Oh, here's, a, here's an interesting one. Ferrari Fairtex. Motherfucker named Ferrari. Ferrari's, uh, he actually lost his one Friday fights debut looking to get a win. Hasn't won a fight in one since 2022, so Ferrari needs himself a win. Sexon, of course. Sean Clancy, like Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell. Uh, Sagringarm, oh god, against Chepichet. Hell of a name. Uh, Num Serene and Yadisila. Same phone and Yod, wait, Yad Kamparak, Yad Kamparak, goodness gracious, Kung Chai, I've seen him before, uh, against Xavier, Honsalek, we've seen him a good amount of times against Coco, good old Coco, and then of course, Jinselek and Shorfa in the main event, Sean Clancy's a good name, hell yeah man, reminds me of Tom Clancy, Clancy Splinter Cell for those that remember that game, uh, not, for, not the Ferrari, <laughs> How about that, bro? The motherfucker named Ferrari. And yet, he lost his first fight. And I think he was one of the fan favorites on the card, and he lost. So, dude, <laughs> he needs a fucking win. Ferrari needs to redeem himself after that shit. Oh, hold on. Let me restart that. What's going on, Pullman? Good morning to you, Pullman. Great to see you. I hope you're doing well. I hope everybody's doing well on this Friday. This is actually our only uh, only fight card of Friday, Saturday. We have the big triple header, Glory, UFC, and then BKFC uh, to top things off. That that show actually might be longer than last week's, which la last week I think was about seven hours, seven, eight hours. 
I think we're going to be more in the eight, nine hour realm tomorrow. So it's going to be a fun, long show. No Mojo JoJo's on this card. <laughs> uh, Door to Mud says ADFG. You can see ADFG. So Chase Bishop. It's a cartoon. <laughs> ah, so he got his name from a cartoon. There we go. Round number one. Jalil Barnes and Dorimon. I did not know Dorimon's a cartoon. That's a good That's a good fact. Barnes, by the way, is an American. Not too many American Muay Thai fighters on some of these cards. Usually, you'll, I'll see an American MMA fighter, but like not an American Muay Thai. It's a little different. Go 1-2 there by Dorimon. Good counter there by Barnes. Already starting off hot and heavy. Barnes got like the Simon Marcus uh, fucking vibes to him with this sort of stance. There's a good low kick by Barnes. Oh, shit. Good low kick by Dormont. Low kick by Barnes. Low kick by Dormont. Jab by Dormont. Good jab by Dormont. Good one, two by Barnes. The Rhyme look like he about to throw a nice counter. He does. He's waiting on him. There is a counter kick. One, two by Dormand and a low kick. Push kick by Dormand. That one was to the body. Ref looked like it was going to be a low blow, but nope. Man, I lost two times last week on the week. Ask Ryan Garcia. <laughs> Never betting against Tank again. Yeah, bro. Hey, that that's the danger about betting against Tank, bro. His opponents will always win, like, scoring. Like, they'll win the rounds. But all Tank needs is, like, one or two big shots, and he's putting the opponent out. That's why I never bet against him, bro, because he'll, he'll fuck up a parlay doing that shit. Is bro actually named Dorian Maul? <laughs> says Michael Jordan. He is, bro. Just like the cartoon, apparently. ADFG told me it's a cartoon. I didn't even know. Uh, what's going on, Nas? Hope you all well. Great fight so far. Uh, we're actually just getting started, uh, Nas. I hope you're doing well, by the way, brother. We are just getting kicked off with Barnes and Dorian Maul. Uh, we only have one MMA fight, by the way, everybody. One MMA. Everything else is Muay Thai. This is probably going to be one of the better Friday fights we've ever seen because the less... MMA we have on these lumpany cards, the better. I can't even I'm I can't even believe it as an MMA fan I'm saying that. By the way, great to see ya. Six one seven, the Savage One is in the building. Good knees for Dortemon and for Barnes. Good knee by Barnes, knee by Dortemon. Good knees by both. This is a great stand up weekend, by the way. Glory kickboxing with their one night tournament is tomorrow, along with the return of Mirthal Groanheart. BKFC has Perry and Rockhold, along with Mendez and Alvarez and Ben Rothwell. UFC has like a, it's like a mid tier apex card, but it's still better than nothing. But still, this is the ultimate stand up weekend. Muay Thai today, kickboxing, BKFC, and MMA tomorrow. The ultimate combat weekend, if anything. Gotta love it. 20 seconds to go. I gotta say, Dortmund, uh is probably slightly ahead at the moment, but Barnes is actually having uh, not not a bad round himself. He's hanging in there with him. Ten seconds to go. Good knees by both. Good knee by Dortmund. Knee by Barnes. Oh, Barnes acting like he's gonna throw, but Dortmund throws. And Dortmund's like, get the fuck off me, boy. Don't ever throw me in my own house. Good round right there. Good round. Gonna slightly go Dortmund there, but I gotta say, Barnes didn't have a bad round, man. And it's funny because usually with American Muay Thai fighters, like if you put them up against other Americans, obviously they're going to do well. But uh, against like some of these Thai guys, it's usually mixed results with most of the Americans losing. But I got to say, though, Barnes is doing uh, doing better than I thought. Not a bad not not a bad start to the fight. Damn, they're showing that clinch with the knees right there. There was a good little hand there by a uh, good little punch there by Barnes got behind the guard. Tomorrow is UFC. Uh, your card's ass. <laughs> All right, I got Song winning. Who you guys got? I'm I'm actually leaning Song too, Jose. I did. I'm probably leaning a little more Simon, but uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Song wins just because uh, Song's in a situation where he may never be in a main event again, and uh, he needs a win if he wants to stay at the top. If he loses, he's back to the prelims. Uh, hit the like button, appreciate it. Sorry, off the topic, sorry, all you guys need to tank Garcia was fixed. Uh, I don't know if it was fixed. I think it was just a display of, uh, levels, you know, Garcia not quite on the level of a Tank Davis. Tank has power in the hands for a guy who's really small, so I, I'm not surprised the fight turned out the way it did, to be honest. Only thing that shocked me was that Garcia got up from the first bomb that he ate. I think it was in, like, round two, round three, when he got up from that. Uh, let's see, I heard rumblings, but I don't think so. Yeah, I've heard it, too. I've definitely heard it too. 
I will say the fact that the hydrate that the rehydration clause was there definitely doesn't help things. I can see why people would think it's suspicious because of that. Uh, but I just think uh, it, it's just a matter of a guy that couldn't handle power. By the way, oh, good elbow, by the way, by Barnes. God damn. Start off slow there a little bit in the round, but they're picking it up. That was a good elbow. Good knees now up against the ropes. Good morning, y'all. 5.52 a.m. here. Good to see you, Alex Smullen. Good morning to your brother. And by the way, everybody, hey, I missed y'all last week. Last Friday, that is. I missed you guys. Uh, but hey, we're back at it, man. Right back at the Friday fights. And it looked like I only was, missed one big highlight from last week. Well, that and Rambo, like, uh, Rambo getting his uh, contract for one. I think Rambo is going to be on a uh, Amazon Prime card coming up. Good knee, by the way, by Barnes. Great knees by Barnes. Good knee by Dormont. They're both clinched up tight. Another knee and another knee. Now the ref going to jump in there and separate them. Ooh, good right hand by Dormont. Good knee by Dormont. Now they're in a clinch. Very technical are these two. Oh, shit. Barnes kind of did some Matrix shit to get out of the way of that punch. Now to clinch up again. Good knee to the body by Barnes. Good knee again by Dortemont. They're both just tied up tight in this clinch. Good elbow by uh, by Barnes. Separated now. That was a long, drawn-out clinch. Good one-two there by Dortemont, but a nice counter knee by Barnes. They're right back to clinch striking again. Just knee and knee. Oh, fucking Dortemont trying to go for a foot stomp there like he's Usman. That was slick. Good elbow by Barnes. Right hand by Dortemont, but a counter knee by Barnes and a good kick to the body by Dortemont. Strike by Dortemont. Step in elbow by Barnes. Now Barnes going to clinch him tight. They're going to throw some knees to the body. 25 seconds to go. Good knee to the body by Barnes. Another knee to the body by Barnes. He's just spamming these clinch knees right about now. And now they're going to break away. Oh, good punches there by Barnes. Damn. Whip the head back of Dortemont there. 10 seconds to go. I got to say, the Barnes with a much better round this round. He had a first round. I could see Dortemont, but I think Barnes took this round easily. Very good. Barnes a tough kid. Oh, yeah, man. That was his best round of the fight. Uh, it's interesting to see an American in a, in a Muay Thai fight against a Thai fighter. And I got to say, Barnes doing better than I would have thought. Uh, I would say one to one right now. One round apiece. Cheers, by the way, everybody. Flavor of the weekend for me is the I Can't Feel My Face by Joel Santana. Got that Joel Santana Diplomats strand. Shout out to New York. Is red body posture funny? <laughs> Yo, it's funny, man. Thai, Thai refs are a different breed, my brother. It's almost as if they don't try to ref the fight. They just try to wait for a dead body to land type of shit. And they always encourage violence, which is what I love about one championship's policies. They force their referees to push uh, violence in action. I love that. Oh, good elbow and a knee now by Barnes. And an elbow by Barnes again, man. He is standing right there in the clinch, Adam. This kid's from Thailand. is like, this America's different. I love it. Uh, does the ref need to look at both fighters that close and intense? He definitely doesn't need to, but I guess he feels like if somebody's going to die soon, that's probably why he does it. And the way these two are throwing, I don't, I mean, it looks like somebody's going to fall soon. Damn, good right hand by, um, by Dortemont and good counters by Barnes. Both men are exchanging counters and just standing toe-to-toe -to -toe right now. Good jab by Dortemont. Nobody's moving back either. They're clinching up now, right in the center, exchanging clinch knees. Another knee by Dortemont, knee by Barnes. Now the ref going to step in there, separate them. Kick to the body and a right hand over the top. Another right hand over the top by Barnes. Good tie up in the clinch by Dortemont and some nice knees. Then the sprinkles with, mixed with some Tasmanian gelato. Oh, that sounds amazing, bro. Damn, old Jose, that's, that's some top level shit, my dude. I know you're going to be sitting pretty all weekend with that. Excellent work, by the way, by Dortemont. And Dortemont picks him up and fucking throws him. What the fuck? <laughs> Acted like it was MMA. Three-piece by Dortemont. Good knee by Dortemont. Another knee. Good jab now by Barnes. Dortemont with a nice counter. Beautiful counter there, like a little step-up elbow. What's going on, Meridian Heights? Good morning to you, sir. 
Uh, what's up with that ref? Ty refs always stand six feet away from the fighters like that. You gotta get hit in the face. <laughs> you ain't lying, bro. You you and Nas are definitely uh, are definitely onto something. The ref definitely doesn't need to stand that close. Oh wow! If fucking Dortmund tries to throw him again and he fails. But yeah, these referees in, in one are very intense when it comes to these tie fights. I'm not sure why. I guess because they they don't want to like if if some like if a fighter gets knocked out, I guess they want to be right there to try to catch their ass. But I'm with you guys though. He doesn't need to be that close. He he could afford to step away for a little bit. Oh, good one too there by Dortmund. Right hand by Barnes. Right by Dortmund. Knee by Barnes. Counter by Dortmund. Shit. They're just matching each other. Knee for knee, punch for punch. 40 seconds to go. This has been a bit of a, a good opener. Good opener right here. Not bad at all. Good jab by Barnes. Overhand by Dortmund. Dortmund with a three-piece. Barnes misses with a punch, but lands the knee. Charges forward, and he throws on the knee to the body. Wraps up with Dortmund. 20 seconds to go. Kick to the body by Barnes is there. Flush. 1-2 by Dortmund's there. Good cross by Barnes. Good knee lands. Flush. 10 seconds to go. Now the ref going to get in there and separate him from that clinch after that brief clinch battle. Barnes with a straight right in the knee, and that is going to end it. Good fight. Good fight. I got to say, man, Barnes did good. If I if I was a judge, I would give Bar I would give it to Barnes by a split. I think Barnes took two and three. Dortmund's best round was the first round. Uh, I think I think Barnes did win it. However, uh, remember this is in Thailand, folks. So I wouldn't be shocked if some of the judging is gonna lean a little bit more toward the Thai fighter on some favoritism shit. But um, even so, very good fight by both. I like seeing that. I think is this the debut for both in in Friday? Let's see. Oh, they don't have anything on the Green Lotus. I like that name, by the way, Green Lotus. Dortmund, anything on him? No. So I think this is like the first appearance in one Friday fights for both. Tied judges. Oh, yeah. Always got to consider the tied judges, my brother, especially in close fights. Here we go, folks. Three rounds. Let's see what the judge is going to say. All three. By unanimous decision... Oh, they gave it to Barnes. They gave it to Barnes by unanimous. I'm shocked. That's the right call, though. That's the right call. The right man won. I figure Barnes, you know, from a technical standpoint, he won. Wasn't sure how the judges were going to score it, but that that's the right call right there. It's rare to see an American Muay Thai fighter get a win over a Thai fighter. Shit. Wow, they got it right. Yeah, I'm shocked, too. <laughs> I'm real shocked by that. Nas says, do you think Fabio Hayes ready for Haggerty and is a good matchup? I think just in terms of all the other contenders in line, like all the other options for Haggerty, I think he's... I think there are a couple that are a little more ready than him, but I think Fabio's ready. Uh, is it a good matchup? It's a good matchup for Haggerty. Not good uh, for Fabio, but it, it, it's a it's only good for Fabio because he can test himself against you know the best in the division. But I believe Haggerty wins that fight just because matchup wise, uh, that type of fight is the one Haggerty could just fucking walk him down and take him out. Race with, uh, Fabio put up a good fight though. He'll put up a very good fight. I just don't think he wins in that one. By the way, that unanimous decision officially goes down. Our one and only Muay Thai fight, a.k.a. the bathroom break fight, is now here. What's going on, Obi? Great to see you, my brother Obi. Great time for us Europeans since this card's early. Hey, I'm, I'm actually happy that my European friends uh, can hang out with me on Friday mornings, as well as my fellow Americans, because, hey, it's, it's 8.51 in the morning for me right now. Uh, and usually on Fridays, I go into work a little bit late, so it... it it helps out a little bit, but yeah, it's. I, I know this is a time slot that my European friends are loving right about now. Even my friends out in Asia, out in Thailand, are loving this shit. Haggerty gotta have a target on his back, absolutely. Fabio, I think, is a good contender. Not sure he wins, but I think he'll be a good contender. Cheers, by the way, everybody.
And speaking of Americans, uh, speaking of American shit, remember everybody, next week is one of the bigger cards of the whole year. Oh, and I got gotcha. you. Let's see. Events. This beautiful mega card right here is going to be nothing but fun, everybody. This is next weekend, mind you. DJ and Marais, Rod Tang and, uh, and Tabaris, Mikey Musumechi defending the Grappling World Championship uh, at Flyweight. Stamp Fairtex makes her return to the cage. Roberto Soldich from Pol well, basically Poland Poland's best fighter is going to be returning. And look who's going to be back. Look who's back. We haven't seen this man since he fought Cosmo Alexander in his debut back in 2019, everybody. 2019. And let's see. An Lang Sang, Fan Rong, Rene de Ritter, Ty Rotolo, Jackie Buntain, Deandre Martin. And, of course, we have two bonus bouts featuring OK Ray uh, Yoon and, of course, Kiriat. Let's see. So there is the big win. And now we have an MMA fight upcoming. Let's see. When I tune in on these Friday mornings, I'm not drinking because they usually do. It's kind of weird. Yeah, it's a little different. A little bit of a different vibe uh, on the Friday morning. Still good entertainment nonetheless, though. It's usually a rarity around here. Good to see you, bro. You really got me up this early fucking jerk, says Michael. Hey, man. This, hey, like, like, like I said, this is not for the faint at heart. This is for the strong at heart. And plus, these events are usually the best we'll see all weekend, so it's early as fuck, but trust me, it is always worth the watch. Good to see Dub C in the building. Time to walk, roll some blunts, uh, and roll some blunts, watch some blunts. Got family here in about four hours from Illinois. Hey, man, shout out to you, my brother. Hope you have a great Friday. That sounds like a fun Friday. Watch some murders. You know it, brother. Stamp fighting this morning. No, that'll be next week. That is next week. Uh, hold on. Let me put this back up. It's actually next Friday is when it's going down. I believe it starts at, if I remember correctly, let me see. Okay, so yeah, 8 p.m. next Friday. So yeah, this is actually next Friday on Amazon Prime, funny enough. Wish it was this morning, though. That'd be fucking dope. But nope, this mega card is going down next week. It'll be fun, though. I want, and of course that's going down tomorrow along with the UFC and of course Gloria, but I'll get to that later. Right now we have David against Marcus. About to go down. Let's see. Get up for violence. I feel sorry for Northcutt. He went to OFC to make more money. He said he made less. <laughs> he made less and got knocked out in his debut. You're right about that, bro. I know Sage Northcutt is probably like, I should have went to fucking Bellator. <laughs> he probably would have been better off. Would have been treated better. Eggs, bacon, just quick protein shake. Oh, man, you got to go eggs and bacon, bro, especially on a Friday. Why not? Got it. Got to go for the eggs and bacon. Might, might as well, especially since you got time. Train, then, egg, then protein shake. Oh, yeah. Got to go. Got to do eggs and bacon, then go on about your day, and then you got to do the protein shake later on. What's going on, Gary? Bando sandwich day. Busy day ahead. Popped in to catch you later. Drop a like. Fill the animals. Hey, I appreciate it, man. I much appreciate it, Gary. Hope you have a good day, of course. My wife doesn't think Stamp is like the sexiest name. What's the problem? <laughs> Sounds like your wife might be jealous of Stamp. She might look at Stamp and be like, oh my god, that, that girl is uh, way more of a badass to me. <laughs> Sounds like your wife might be jealous a little bit. Uh, Northcutt got an oversized opponent, one shot, and handed him a, a few years layoff. It's true, man. Cosmo Alexander hit him with one of the hardest punches I'd ever seen somebody get hit with, and Northcutt was face planted. And it only took one punch, by the way, only one shot. It's not like he was in a firefight before it happened. So you're right, bro. He hadn't fought since 2019, so we're talking four years. It's been four years since we've seen Sage Northcutt fight, man, which is crazy to think. By the way, we're having our walkouts happen right now between Dave... Uh, Bengui Gui or Bengui Gui? I don't know how you say that name. And then Marcus Paolo uh, Amaral. Looks like we're gonna get Francis News tomorrow. One making their final offer tomorrow. I'm expecting to get him. You know what, Dubsy? If Francis goes to one, that's gonna be a bit more interesting than him going to PFL or Bellator because PFL has no competition. Bellator's heavyweight division is very old, so like. 
there, there's more names there, but uh, he could easily run through them. With one, nobody really knows the heavyweights outside of, like, well, they used to know Brandon Vera, but he's retired now. So for Francis, he could become the face of the heavyweight division out there. Only thing I'm concerned about for Francis in one is the competition, because other than Anatoly, there really is nobody. Rug Rug is a good project, but he's not ready yet. Uh, guys like Grishenko, not quite ready yet. You know what I mean? Uh, and then there's a there's another dude I'm thinking of, like a Russian guy, but he got knocked out recently. So the, the competition ain't going to be there. Plus, Arjun Bilar loves to run more than fight, so Arjun wouldn't even show up for a fight with Francis if he was given one. Crazy that PFL's buying Belta. Bro, That that's probably the craziest fucking news I've seen all week. If it really goes down... And PFL is, I mean, Bellator is absorbed by PFL. It's going to be an end of an era. And all of a sudden, one's going to be the second best promotion in the world. Because I don't know what they got cooking over at PFL, but as long as they don't allow elbows and they absorb P- Bellator's roster, I don't know if they'll get it better, but it's certainly not going to raise their stock a bit, even though it is a very interesting move. It all depends on what they do, though. I shouldn't say that. It all depends on what they do. Mainly. Let's see. It's interesting how Americans become interested in one championship. Been doing a deep dive. I think they're an awesome, fucking awesome organization. They are, bro. It's funny because I remember I've been watching them for about coming up on like six, seven years now. I was watching one championship when they were allowing uh, head slams and like soccer kicks on the ground. Oh, it's always one of those organizations where I was like, I really like this, but I wonder where they can go with it. And to see them grow to this level is actually pretty fantastic. And they've done it the right way. They've kept a lot of their cards free on YouTube. They put their premium events. Like, they now have a home at Amazon Prime. Used to be... They used to do it all on YouTube, but now they got got it on, like, Prime. But still, very good format that they have a lot of their cards on YouTube to help get the fans. Good low kick, by the way, by Dave. This is the Philippines versus Brazil. This is our only MMA fight on the night. The only fight where we're going to see maybe a, a, a semblance of ground game. But I wouldn't be shocked if we don't. Especially with the way these two striking right now. Good elbow by uh, Amaral. But damn, Amaral with a good high kick. Amaral went for the fucking Superman punch, but it didn't quite land. Dave able to block it. Amaral just standing there. Dave with a good punch of the low kick. Good jab by Amaral. By the way, male straw weights in MMA is something we do not see often. I'm actually surprised that they were able to get... The- oh my god, Amaral almost knocked him out. Dave had to tie up. He had to tie up, and now he's pushing Amaral over the corner, and there's a takedown. I was wondering when we'd see it. Uh-oh, top control. Top control for Dave. Full mount. Oh, he steps over in the full mount. Oh, Amaral's fucked. Amaral's in a bad spot. Now side control. Good elbow by Dave. Another elbow by Dave. I think his last name is... Benguigi, I think is how they pronounce it. That's one hell of a last name to have. Benguigi, though, is right on top of Emeral. Right in the uh, mount position. He's now dragging Emeral over on the ground here. Kind of dragging him over into the ropes. I love how they have like referees right where the ropes are to prevent them from falling out. It's just so funny to watch them all get their hands up near the ropes so they don't fall. The ref is calling for action, too. I like that. I like that the ref is like, do not lay and pray. You better be active on the floor. And actually, that was a good policy that uh, one championship's Thai uh, president instilled. He basically said, if you don't have a friend-friendly style, your ass will not be invited to Lumpany, and you will not have a one championship contract. They're basically forcing everybody to fight. Good top control for Banguiji, but still nothing is happening there with it. Uh, let's see, bring back soccer punts like Randy Orton does, old pride rules, they die, they die. I'm actually surprised they don't have that rule now, but I'm with you though, I would love to see it back. Let's see, I feel like, man, two men under 145 should finish 85%. Oh, absolutely. Especially in Muay Thai, like in Muay Thai, we see that a lot, but I'm with you, in MMA, it def- that definitely needs to be the case. Pride insane, Bellator risen last year, fakes, kicks, grounded insane, flashbacks of pride, absolutely. Gotta have more of that. Got to have way more of that. Red cards is Archie and A. I'm I'm down for the ref giving a card right now, or at least warning them. He's not even saying shit. 
He's acting like a UFC referee right now. What the fuck? This, this man's not saying anything to them. They're they're in top position, but the crowd in Lumpany is completely bored. This is the bathroom break fight of anything, folks. Usually the bathroom break fights are the most boring, obviously, and MMA fights on Lumpany cards are usually bathroom break fights, if I'm being completely honest. We'll get a finish here and there, but for the most part, they're usually bathroom break fights. This is living up to the billing. Now, Bangawigi stands over Emeril and is just kicking him in the hamstrings while the ref stares at him. Ref, tell the fucker to stand up. Thank you! It took this man five years to finally be vocal. He was way too quiet for way too long. Where, where's that other Thai ref that basically yells at people every five seconds to be active? We need that fucker for this fight. Good jab for Bangoiji. That one landed flush on Emerald. Emerald with a loud body kick. Jesus Christ. Low kick by Bangoiji. Oh, single leg on Emerald. Emerald trying to fight it. They're up against the ropes. Emerald is still hopping around trying to defend, staying up on the feet for now. Bangoiji tries to go to a high crotch. Now lifts him up and he slams him. And now Bangoiji is on top. Oh, man. Bangoiji just able to pick him up and slam him with relative ease for the second time in the round. Give him a yellow card. It's the UFC audition. He said, let day day I could watch it. <laughs> Pretty much. This deadly as UFC audition is that ref. You can tell this fucker doesn't want to work in one anymore, especially without the tentative ease being. He's allowing the lay and pray to go down. Ten seconds to go. I have seen more active top position in uh, one championship's women's MMA fights. That tells you everything. And there is the end of the round. That was a bathroom break. That was uh, The first round was won by Bengoiji. That round's going to go to Philippines, but boy, was that was that boring. Tiny bit of blood coming out of the face, looks like. A wipe in the face right now. Yeah, we got blood. Oh, yeah. I wonder where that was from. I don't know if that was from a headbutt. Maybe he had a strike on the ground or something. I'd hope they showed that replay. Cheers, everybody. There we go. Let's put that to the side. Not a bad first round. I've seen better, though. This is pretty much what I expect from a lot of the MMA fights in the beginning. Cheers, by the way. There we go. Round two. Bangigi won that first round. That one's going to go to the Philippines. So Philippines takes round one. If we're going round by round, of course, one championship score is in its entirety. But if we're going to break it down round by round and give people an idea of who's ahead, I'm going to give it to Bangigi. Good high kick by Amaral. Oh, shit. Good Bangigi. Good uh, strike by Bangigi. Backed up Amaral there. These two are going to start off standing to begin the second round. I imagine Bangoiji is going to go for another takedown at any point. Four piece by Emeril, though. Initiates a clinch, does Emeril. That's a move I don't think you want to do with a guy like this. And now Bangoiji's going to level change. Oh, yeah. Takedown is incoming. He's about to fight. He's about to fucking level change for it at any given moment. Good knees by Bangoiji. Throwing a good, another good knee. He's got Emerald up against the corner. Referee is close, but he's not vocal. He's just watching, of course. Bangigi just trying to really pressure Emerald here and wear him down with his clinch. But it's not an active clinch, though. Now he's going to try to level change again. The first time it failed. Good underhooks, though, by, uh, by Emerald to stay up. Bangigi goes down to the knees. Now Emerald tries to elbow him to get him off, and Bangoigi gets him up and slams him straight to the ground yet again. The third time he slammed him in this fight. Bangoigi has been wrestling his way uh, to victory so far, and I imagine that uh, one will not allow him back due to this, because if you're going to have ground game in one championship, you got to hunt for finishes, or else they don't like it. Not a lot of MMA fights from OFC uh, this year yet. Mainly just Muay Thai and not a lot of kickboxing as well. Yeah, man, they've been they've been heavily emphasizing on the Muay Thai has won championship. It seems like 
uh, it seems like they kind of went with the sport that I guess gets them the most attention because they know, obviously, UFC is the leader in MMA. And in kickboxing, I think a lot more people before glory over one. So it seems like one championship trying to find their niche. And kick, and I'm sorry, Muay Thai seems to be their niche because they have the best, it seems, right now out of all the big organizations uh, when it comes to combat sports. So you're right, Nas. A lot, of, a lot of Muay Thai fights this year. Seems like they're trying to lean more into the Muay Thai realm. And I don't hate it for one because it's actually the most entertaining uh, of all their combat sports. Good kick to the body by Emeril. Good low kick by Bangawigi. Bangawigi with an inside, actually no, an outside uh, thigh kick. Good jab by Bangawigi. Good return fire by Emeril. Emeril with a good one too. Bangawigi tries to go low. High single leg again. Has him up against the ropes trying to get him down. If he gets him down, this will be the fourth time in the fight. Amaral is trying to defend with all his life. He's tried his best the entire fight, but Bangawigi's wrestling is just too strong. Once again, going for a high crotch. Amaral, though, is defending only for the moment, and there is a takedown. Bangawigi had to work for that shit. This is definitely the type of style that's going to win uh, Dave, Dave the fight, but is it going to get Dave another shot back in one? Hell no, because... The, the Thai president is not going to like this. They want death, and so far my man is doing the exact opposite. He's wrestling to a decision, which is good. He'll get the win, but I don't think the one championship bosses are going to be happy with this. They're probably sleeping as they watch this fight, if anything. They're probably like, yeah, we're going to cut this guy. At least that's what I'm thinking. Well, not cut him, but they won't invite him back, I should say. Right now, this top position is is working for him. It's not working for the audience, though. The audience is dead silent. You can hear, you can you, you like you can literally hear just fucking like the homes of people sitting there. They're sitting there, but nothing's really happening. Oh, good elbow by Bangawigi. Good elbow again. Eighteen seconds ago now, good elbow. Ten seconds ago. And there's the end of the round. Nothing happened there. Absolutely nothing went down. That one's going to go for Bangawiji again, even though it would be funny. It would be pretty funny if uh, they saw this, if the judges just saw this and said, you know what? We're going to give it to the guy who didn't lay and pray the whole time. <laughs> I'd, I, oh, I'd fucking laugh. Feels like something they'd do. What's going on, Clippa? Good to see you, my dude. I hope you're doing well on this violent Friday. I'm certainly doing good myself. Good way to start shit off. We haven't had a finish yet, but I imagine we're going to get one probably after this because there's only one MMA fight on the card. Thank fuck. I got to give Marcus credit. At least Marcus wants to make it a stand-up fight. Meanwhile, uh, uh, Philippines can't wait to just make it a wrestle fest. Can't wait for Perry to KO Rockhold. Oh, it's going to be so violent. I'm actually surprised Luke did this. Luke seems like the type where he would want to do like a um, like some sort of influencer boxing fight or something. I didn't get bare knuckle vibes from him. Cheers, by the way. What do you think is the best pound for pound in all combat sports right now, and who is your favorite? I have no idea. It's hard to tell because they're all the best in every sport are the best for good for different reasons. Good low kick by Banguiji. Uh, let's see, and who's your favorite? I have a lot of favorites. I mainly like fights instead of fighters, if that makes sense. Uh, but there's a lot of fighters I like to watch. Basically, anybody in Glory is entertaining. Anyone in the One Lumpany series is pretty entertaining. Uh, if we're going for a UFC, it, it kind of varies, but I tend to go for a lot of the, a lot of the exciting striker types, pretty much. But I'm, I'm more of like a fights kind of guy instead of a fighters guy, but it's... Yeah, it's kind of like that. But it's, in terms of who's the best today, it's tough to say. Good takedown by Banguiji. 
I'd love to say John Jones, but it's hard to say John Jones when all he did recently was beat up a kickboxer that didn't want to be in there with him. Uh, CJ, Rush Family, what up? What's going on, Ed William? Great to see you, bro. So, yeah, that's tough. I got to think about that one, Dub C. I'll get back to you. I got to I gotta think about that one, actually, in terms of who's the pound-for-pound pound best today because uh, there are a lot of good names that could be considered. 340 to go. By the way, it looks like Bango Week is trying to get a submission here. He's attacking an arm right now. One of the ones I consider is probably Israel Adesanya because uh, he's been active as well as pretty much taking out everybody in front of him that isn't Jan Blankovic. 20 to go. Bangigi now in a... Oh, yeah, he's... Okay, I thought I thought he was going for a crucifix position, but not quite. About 3.08 to go. The only other one I would consider probably the best right now is Volkanovski. Even though he did lose to Islam in a close fight, he pretty much cleaned out his division. So that's certainly a guy I got to put on the list. In terms of, like, active ones today, like, two that jump off the page for me, I would say Israel and Volk, only because Israel and Volk have cleaned out their divisions pretty much. They have some contenders still looming, but both have pretty much done some fantastic work. I'm going to give Islam a little more time, let him pick the division before I can put him there. Same with Sterling at 35. Uh, I had to give him a little more time. Moreno looks like he has some potential, but I need to give him more time to cherry-pick the divisions a bit. I know Amanda's definitely one of the best with the females because she just got her fucking belt back after Pena had a good night. Uh, I was going to say Valentina, but her reign recently just ended. So she, hey, definitely one of the best female fighters, but with that reign ending, it uh, moves her down the, the line a little bit. Amro's no take down defense, only on BJJ, a few strikes, that's it, pretty much. And now he's right back up. Two minutes to go. I'd love it if the judges just said, I hate wrestling and BJJ, and they just gave it to the guy that stood up. Either that or they gave him a, uh, either that or they would just, like, I don't know, give him some consideration. You got Usman and Bellator anywhere on there. Yeah, Usman from Bellator is high up. Patchy Mix is pretty high up as well because of what he recently just did. Good hammer fist. I'd say Usman and Patchy are up there. Yaroslav Amazov is up there because he's pretty much cleaned out his weight class almost. Um, Johnny Eblen, I'm going to wait to see what he does in middleweight. He's done very good so far, but a little bit more work. I'll put him up there. But I'd say from Bellator, Usman is probably top of the list right now. Out of out of all the Bellator champs, I'd, I'd have Usman as the best champ in Bellator right now. Let's see, Jerry. The Russians, I do. Beast Cousins are better. Dariush. There's new Russian heavyweight. I'm blanking on his name, but he's a problem. Uh, Palovich, that guy, 58 seconds ago, or is it somebody else you're thinking of? Let me know. Oh, good elbow, by the way, by Banguiji. 48 seconds to go. There's going to be a wrestle fest to the end. Valentina's the best woman in the UFC. Don't care what anybody says. <laughs> Patchy put him in a coffin and says, he did, bro. And what and the thing that's crazy about Patchy is that he ran through the he had the toughest road in the tournament to the final and he wiped out everybody, including the um the interim champ. So for me, he's like probably one of the best. One of the ones that they're not talking about, uh, Bantamweight, but I think they're talking about him now. Now that st he knocked out Stotts, I think a lot more people are gonna put respect on his name. Eighteen seconds to go for David Benguigi. See Pal, I agree. He hasn't come over yet. It's a beast family. Oh, okay. It's a new... All right, it's another Russian. I got you. I got you. Ten seconds to go. Uh, he's a monster. Yeah, that's the... All right, yeah. Definitely let me know who that is because uh, there are a good amount of Russian heavyweights out there. Good end of the fight. Happy the fight's finally over with. That was a lay and pray win by Banguiji. A bathroom break fight if I've ever seen one in Lumpany. Funny enough, this is not going to be a bathroom break fight. You know a fight's going to be... You know a fight is a bathroom break fight when this isn't, yet this is. It says a lot. David will nonetheless win, though. He should win by decision. It was a lot of short ground and pound and top control by him. Uh, the Thai president is probably not going to be happy with that. He's probably going to be pissed. He's probably bored to tears watching that shit. But nonetheless, a win's a win for David. See. Amaral tried his best to make it a uh, tried his best to use this uh, takedown defense, 
But unfortunately, he doesn't even have any takedown defense present. He was just getting slammed over and over and over again. And there is a woman, by the way, who is loudly screaming. Jesus Christ, she's like shrieking. I think that might be Dave's wife or something. Holy shit. She's like shrieking, and I can like hear it vibrating my eardrum <laughs> as loud as it is. All right, now we're back in the center. No 350,000 bots. Hell no, not for this fight. <laughs> not, not for that one, you're right. Neither one deserves a bonus. All right, let's see. Unanimous decision, decision I imagine. Judges score it. All three judges. Favor of the winner by unanimous decision. David Benduigi. Should be Dave. Yep. Dave Benguigi gets the decision. And thank goodness that fight's over. Because, boy, that was not entertaining. That was a, a lay and pray fest. But here's the good news, everybody. There's no more MMA fights on this card. It's now all Muay Thai for the rest of the event. I like that they only put one MMA fight on this. I guess because they knew it was going to be... I guess they see matchups like that. They're like, oh yeah, we'll just have this as the bathroom break fight. That's probably how they uh, book this card, I imagine. By the Royal Candy Kush, Super Gas. Uh, let's see, better than what I remember. <laughs> Shit, it can't beat that, man. Definitely can't beat that. And actually, it's funny you mentioned Usman Nurmagomedov, Dub C. I'm looking forward to his next fight. I like I, I like what he did this time around. I was very impressed with his last title defense, and I'm looking forward to the next one. I think he's going to be one of the problems to come out of that family. Obviously, Makachev already has the belt at 35, but I, I want to see what Usman's going to do. I also want to see what Umar is going to do in the UFC at 35, man. I want to see what he's going to do and shit. The Nurmagomedov got some good soldiers in that family, man. I'm looking forward to seeing what they're going to do. Cheers, everybody. Yeah. Big fan of Usman. Islam ever uses UFC as a huge problem. Oh yeah, absolutely. I am too, bro. If if Islam were to lose, it's definitely gonna be a problem. For the UFC. Umar is my number one prospect. Same yo, same here, sis. You and I, same page on that, brother. He he's my number one. In terms of prospects, like in combat sports right now, he's he's my top. He's my top prospect. I'm right there with you. He has the hands and he can wrestle. Yes. He has the hands that Habib never had, but also has the wrestling that Habib had. You know what I'm saying? He has Habib's wrestling, but he has better hands and better striker. Usman, kind of the same thing, but Umar definitely, definitely has the striking that Habib never had. And if you combine that with the Habib family wrestling... That's a machine that nobody wants to fuck with in that cage. So I'm right there with you. Small version of his brother. Oh, yeah. And he's going to be a problem for a lot of people, bro. He's going to be a problem for a lot of people. I can tell you right now, 135 ain't trying to fuck with that right now. Even even Marab. Even Marab, who's like gatekeeper at 35, is kind of like, eh, you know what? I don't know if I want that. Marab has that pressure style, but... I don't think Marab really wants to deal with somebody who has possibly better wrestling than he does when all Marab has is pressure. They throw kicks like Jones. Yeah, man, they have, bro, the next the next generation of that Nurmagomedov family, they have way better striking. It's, it's crazy to me. Oh, and by the way, one of my favorite Thai fighters, I believe her nickname is Scarface. Yes, Miss Scarface. Remember this shit, everybody? She knocked out a Fairtex uh, fighter. Gus Jung back in one Friday fights number four back in February. I haven't seen Miss Scarface in a little bit. She's one of my favorite female uh, Thai fighters that is not uh, from Thailand. Oh, and remember, hey, isn't this the meth addict? This is the heroin addict, right? Yes, it is. She knocked out this chick. I remember that. 
I remember that. Knocked her out one round. So this is the, uh... So Miss Scarface is fighting, uh... Is fighting a junkie. This should be fun. A UK junkie looking for the next fix. I tell you what, though, UK. You got yourself some good representation. Haggerty bringing home the belt for one. One's Muay Thai. And now you have, uh... Actually, there's another female Muay Thai fighter from the UK that got a knockout recently. So, shit. The UK got some underrated Muay Thai, surprisingly. Meth or heroin is definitely one or the other. She was the girl that knocked out the other girl for her fixed money. And I think with uh, all that bot money, I think she might have blown it already on whatever whatever drug she's on. She probably blew it all. Which explains why she's fighting Miss Scarface. I'm, I'm going to pick Miss Scarface, though. Actually, but then again, it's hard. You you can't really knock out a crackhead, right? You can't really knock out a junkie. Like junkies got that they got that crackhead endurance and shit. Like like Aaron Pryor, snort cocaine and go box what what is it, fifteen rounds or something back in the day? Against Alexis Aguayo and, and people like that. If if she if Lisa Burley is on the blow, if she snorted some blow back there, then I don't think uh my lady Miss Scarface is is uh, gonna have a good time with her. She's gonna have a tough time, if anything. Miss Scarface looks like she's ready for another battle, though. Let's see, Habib created Dynasty, Meth or Heroin. <laughs> Let's see, that's her. I was about to say, I knew she looked familiar. Oh, I knew that face looked familiar. I'm like, hold up. She looked like she fought for her last fix when she knocked that girl out. I tell you what, I'm I'm cheering for Vera, but I think Lisa here is uh. I think I think Lisa is actually gonna maybe outlast her. I can see Lisa winning this fight. I'm gonna go for Miss Scarface though. I'm a, I'm a cheer for her. She's always entertaining when I watch her, and this chick is pretty is is pretty entertaining too. Whenever she's fighting for her fix money, I will say the face looks a little more sunken in than normal here. This is a catch weight of 112, so that tells me somebody missed weight here. I th I don't know if it's her. I don't know if it's Lisa. It might it might be Veda. Veda looks like a little more full than uh, Lisa here. Lisa looks a bit more sunken in than she normally does. So somebody definitely missed weight here. I mean, it was last time she had her fix. If neck itches, she not gonna live very long. Well, shit, remember, she had that $350,000 bot bonus, so there's no question she probably blew all that on some on some good dope out there. There's no question she blew all that money. She fight, She's basically fighting for her next fix right now. Because she looks a little more sunken in than the last time we saw her. That means she already blew all that money. <laughs> She got she got the purse money, but the bonus money she she blew all that on some good dope out there. Nonetheless, this is gonna be a damn good fight though. Miss Scarface is never boring, and we all know what happens when you when you put a dope head in this sort of situation. They're gonna fight like this is the last time they're gonna get a fix. So we're in for we're in for a fun one. I see it too busy getting high to train and do what they be doing. Hope she gets knocked out. She really chunky living and they took Florida too many junkies around. Uh, it all depends. If she's an athletic junkie like an Aaron Pryor, who is a crackhead that used to be one of the best boxers uh, of his generation, or if it's if it's like a new age, if it's like a new age dopehead, like um, who was the one MMA fighter that got caught using cocaine? Not John Jones. Well, John is one of them, but there was another one that got caught using some hard drug <laughs> that I can't think of right now. There's some that are able to do it but you're right the majority of dope heads are not able to they're too busy getting high this chick right here she doesn't have any more dope money so she she fighting for her dope money and you know what happens when a junkie goes through withdrawals they get angry as shit they get agitated that means she probably been withdrawn for at least two weeks that means she is angry than a motherfucker I wasn't on there, so I didn't get to ask. What do you think of Bobby Green KO? I think it looked purposefully. I almost think a DQ should have been called. Well, you got to remember, uh, Bobby Green changed his name to, to King before that fight and flashed $60,000 in cash. I'm not surprised that Bobby out here doing dumb shit like headbutting people head on. So I actually kind of thought he did. I think he meant to do something different, but uh, when he realized what he did, he wasn't exactly remorseful. I think he's just mad he got caught. That's the thing. He's not... It's not a question of whether he did it. He just mad that he got caught doing it. Good one, two, three. Now for Burley. Good kick for Burley. Oh, shit. Paulman got two on it. 
Palmer got two on it. One for the bathroom. Yes, sir. One for the bathroom indeed, my brother. I would I will absolutely take you up on that. Cheers, my dude. As these two are already starting. Miss Scarface and Lisa Burley. Briley looking pretty sharp here. Good high kick for Briley. One, two, three for Miss Scarface. Miss Scarface Vera with a nice step in knee there. Stephen Bonner. Stephen Bonner. That's true. Stephen Bonner, I think, was on some pretty hard shit. What's fucked up is he died from using fentanyl, too. Like, that was accidental overdose. So, yeah, Bonner was definitely on that hard shit. So, it's like, it's it's rare when you see a dope head that can perform in fighting, but Meridian Heights is right. Most of them cannot. But there's like a sh there's like a short list of those who can, but for the most part, yeah. <laughs> Let's see, Ronderos. He got got for coke, if I remember. Oh, that is a good one. Ronderos is a good one. How do you mention it? Good one, too, by the way, by Vera. Good, uh, good elbow. How about Oscar De La Hoya? He counts, right? Oscar De La Hoya? Big, big co I know he was a coke kid during the promoter years, but what about during the fighting years? Good three-piece by Briley. Another one, two, three, bye-bye. Look at her. She landed on Miss Scarface. Yeah, she definitely going through withdrawals. Oh, my God. She got that withdrawal anger in her right now. Holy hell. Oh, Vera looks like she's shook. Oh, oh, Briley charged her again. Another blitz. Good three-piece. Good knee, though, by Vera. She better be careful. Briley's anger starting to turn up here. This is dangerous. Good needle for Vera. Now the ref jumping in there to pull him apart. Briley with a kick to the body. Briley, damn, with another kick to the body to one, two. Now Miss Scarface charging forward. Nice elbow. Another elbow by Miss Scarface. Damn, another elbow. Bro, Briley just eating this shit. She ate them damn elbows that rocked her damn head and somehow was still awake. It's going to be hard for Vera to knock this girl out. Three, four piece by Lisa. Elbow by Lisa. She ain't quitting. She's trying to count with the elbows. They're in a dirty clinch now. Oh, shit. Good knees by Miss Scarface. Some slapping knees right to the side of the body. Ten seconds to go. Good one, two, three. Good knee by Lisa. There's the end of the round. Let's see. Rachel's got spent for coke. Aaron Pryor was heavy into coke, but could fight his ass off. Yeah, you're right, Aunt William. He was one of those rare fighters that was big into it. He was he was big into it back in the day. And I think Panama Lewis fucking used to fill his water bottle with uh, with stimulants and shit. So yeah, he was heavy into shit and somehow was able to perform. I don't know how, but somehow he did it. Oscar De La Hoya, uh, back in the Chuck days, they all did cook for fights. Oh, absolutely. It used to be a tradition, uh, like, way back in the day. I think they used to, they literally would sniff it, and then they would just go 15 rounds full throttle on some wild shit. Oscar was partying his champ, uh, Iron Mike. That's right, Iron Mike was, uh, Mike Tyson was a cokehead for a little bit. I think it was like coke and weed for him. He was in a lot of shit. Back like UFC 40, Dana was getting the UFC fighters always geeked. I believe, I believe that. Especially before you saw, oh yeah, like pre use oh, absolutely. Like st steroids, HGH, cocaine, all, oh, everything. Everything. Good kick to the body by Briley, good one too. 70s and 80s, yeah, that's true, that's true. That's the time period I'm thinking of, 70s and 80s. Back in the days where they would like in, in, in like professional sports, they in a, NFL games they'd be getting a high before their fights. I think wrestlers would snort coke and get real drunk before they go out there and perform. So, yeah, back in them days, some some people had it in them, but for the most part, not every junkie does. But there there was like a, there's like a short list of them that did, which is insane to me. When thinking when thinking back on it, by the way, the ref gonna separate them. Mike loves shrooms. Oh. I haven't done shrooms in a good while. I actually have a... I have like two mushroom chocolate bars that I have yet to dive into. Good kick to the body by Lisa. I may have to dive back into that one of these days, just for old time's sake. Good four-piece by Lisa. Good knee by Lisa. I'm gonna wait for like a big fight night to do that, though. Ref jumping in. They separate him. Good kick to the body by Lisa. 
Two piece by Vera. Two piece by Miss Scarface again. Good knee by Miss Scarface in the clinch. Babe Ruth before every game during the game would eat fish and drink beer. <laughs> That's true. Didn't he? Uh, didn't he eat hot dogs as well in between home runs and shit? Good right hand. He was a real fat ass. He loved to eat food while he was uh, hitting home runs. That was just crazy to me. Once again, Lisa kicking and Vera with a two piece. Vera with a three piece. Nice combo meals by Briley. That first round, I want to give the Lisa. The second round, I'm gonna kind of lean Lisa. Look at Lisa. She throwing them damn kicks. Vera charged a forward at her, though. I like that Vera's taking her time before getting in there and blocking some of this shit. Vera's got a corner. Lisa trying to fight her way out of it. Let's see it miss. Oh, my God. Step and elbow by Lisa. Good tie up and a good knee by Vera. 50 seconds to go. Vera has been pressing forward on Briley the entire second round, but, boy, Briley just, she will not quit. She's getting hit with some hard shit. But she's right in there with her. They're both hitting each other with knees now in this clinch. Hey, look, it says a lot that this is more entertaining than that bathroom break MMA fight we just witnessed. Both land knees. Both trying to go down the floor. Jab to the body. Another jab for Lisa. Oh, good jab for Vera, though. Shit, she backed up Lisa with that. Another one, two. Another one, two by Vera. Pressing forward on Lisa here. Lisa with a nice step in elbow. Oh, they both land elbows now. Lisa with a five, six piece. Throwing a knee is Vera. Knee by Lisa. Elbow by Lisa. She is backing up. Miss Scarface. An uppercut overhand. God damn. <laughs> Fuck. These two ladies were fucking throwing. God damn. Let's see. Thurman Munkin, uh, St. Louis Chargers, LT. That's true. Ladanian, I mean, um, Lawrence Taylor's whole career was, I think, using that sniff at one point. I remember Panama said, give me the bottle. Not the one that Aaron drinks it. Uh, and then he drinks the bottle. Piece of shit out of Alexis. Yeah, he was like, he was like, no, 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 Aaron, not that bottle. The one that I mixed. The one that I mixed. And the fucking camera picked it up. And that was one of the first cases of uh, somebody being caught being given, like, basically PEDs. And he went in there and he, and like Aunt William said, beat the fuck out of him. Uh, Thurman Munson, bring back memories, <laughs> big fight night. I know you heard, but there's a huge main event in Canada. <laughs> you might want to use shrooms for the trilogy, LOL. For, for Nunez and Pena, I might have to. That'll be the only way I'll enjoy it, is <laughs> if I have a fucking shroom bar. You know what, I may have to bring it out for that, because that all... Oh, Pena Nunez 3 is going to be brutal. That's going to be a brutal watch, holy hell. You're right about that. Jay's the most consistent streamer in MMA. Hey, appreciate it, Brandon V. Hope you're doing well, my brother. I'm certainly trying my best over here, my dude. Always got to make sure I am consistent for the people, because consistency is key. By the way, excellent jazz by Briley. High kick by Briley. Good elbow. God damn. That last round, I may have to give to Vera just because she pressed forward more on Briley. But I got to say, this Lisa woman is standing there and trading with Miss Scarface. This is some crazy shit. She def Either she has withdraw anger or she got into something before she went out there. She has like the super pack now that she made all that money. Good knee by Briley. Because I usually don't see Briley last too long in some of these. She's usually either knocking somebody out or getting knocked out. It's got to be one or the other, but she she's lasting in this thing. Miss Scarface, I've seen I've seen go to deep fights, but not Lisa. Low kicks by Vera, good body kick by Lisa. Lisa with a nice jab. Good jab, good one too. I can see it being one round apiece. By the way, three, four, five. Good hook, good one do by Lisa. Elbows for Lisa. Look at this shit. Now a knee. She won't quit. <laughs> She has no quit in her. I love it. I've never seen this from her. She usually has the look of of somebody that fades early or that gets basically used to prop up other people, but here she is hanging in there with a woman that knows how to throw. Good one, too, again by Lisa. Kick to the body by Lisa. Beautiful kick to the body. Now a jab by Lisa. Lisa may been fighting off the back foot, but lately she's been standing in there with her good right hand by Vera. But Lisa once again coming back with a combo meal of about six of them. I think they almost hit hit heads there. Good kick to the body by Lisa. That one looked partially blocked, though. I think an elbow caught that, that kick. Good elbow by Vera. One-two by Vera. Vera hit her with a two-piece and it made Lisa back up. 
Low kick by Vera. Good hook by Vera. This is beautiful. I kick by Lisa. Shit. How you get a jab? Now I kick by Vera in response. Lisa doing the UK proud right about now. Even if she loses, I'm not mad at her because this is the best I've seen her fight before. I've never seen her fight. I, I've never seen her deep in a fight. I, I don't know if she'd fade or not, but no, she has that. She has that true um, dope fiend endurance, and you're gonna need that out there in Lumpany. Damn, good three piece there by Lisa. Good elbow by Vera. Hook by Vera. Ooh, hook to the body, hook to the head. Good jab by Vera. High kick by Briley. Low kick by Vera. Kick to the body by Briley. Gets caught in a two-piece by Miss Scarface. Backs up Lisa. Lisa with a nice elbow. Oh, double elbow there by Lisa. Now a jab behind it. Damn, lands a flush jab. The high kick. Oh, wow. Fucking Miss Scarface did the Matrix shit on her. She missed that high kick. And there's the end of the fight. Go ahead, give it to Miss Scarface. Go ahead and give it to Miss Scarface. I was I was more entertained by that than the bathroom break fight we saw earlier. Uh, she needs some extended release pills and thirst. She's still high. <laughs> Pena Nunez should open the car, much less main event. I agree. The fact they have it as a main event is just like, they, they want to torture the fans in Vancouver out there. Let's see, better than the last MMA fight. I agree. That MMA fight was a, was a bathroom break, my brother. This shit is what we want to see, just constant action. She said, give me 350k, I want another chicken, if you know, you know. <laughs> I love it. I need a full chicken, you got that right, good fight, Zan William, definitely, brother. I'm telling you guys, man, women, I'll take a women's Muay Thai fight over a women's MMA fight any day, I don't know what it is, but these ladies, these ladies entertain me more than MMA, that tells you everything. Here we go. By unanimous decision, give it to Miss Scarface. Give it to my girl. Oh, they gave it to Lisa! Oh! Wow! Wow! She fought off the back foot for the majority of it, and she won! <laughs> wow! Oh, wow. I'm not even mad at that. Like I said, I was impressed by Lisa, but I, I'm not mad at that. But wow, they gave her the win. I, I tell you what, I tell you what, <laughs> we gonna have to look out for this for this junkie right here. This girl fights like she never has quit in her. I mean, a knockout win back in March, and now a tough decision over a a tough a tough female striker and Miss Scarface and Vera. Shit, I'm impressed. Good decision, good call. What's going on, AJ? Good to see you, bro. Meridian Heights, if she is indeed a junkie. She's a high-functioning lawn. I didn't really mind. <laughs> I don't really mind high-functioning junkies. I don't think she's going to get the end of $50,000 worth of dope, though. I'll tell you what. I know she got one when she got that KO, but yeah, man. I I don't know how long this is going to last. That That's the only thing I wonder with her. How long can she keep this run up? But, hey, she got a good run right now going. I won't be surprised if we see her on Amazon Prime pretty soon. I won't be shocked. She's at... Hold on. What, let me see what weight class she is. Let's see. 5'4". Okay. It doesn't say weight class, but by 5'4", probably going to be a flyweight Adam weight, if I had to guess. She's definitely going to be in line for a title shot if she gets at least another win. Uh, good call. Good decision. I agree. She getting a chicken. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. Got to give it to her. She's getting the chicken and a high functioning addict. Full on, man. She she's on that list of of high functioning addicts. It's very weird. I agree with the decision. Definitely landed more damage than blows. Oh yeah. It's interesting though, because usually I know a lot of judges like to go in favor of whoever's pressing forward. But technically speaking, she did land more strikes off the back foot. And I was kind of concerned that maybe because she was counter fighting that she wouldn't get the decision. But you know what? I'm not mad with the decision at all. No, no controversy from me. I like it. And honestly, that fight made me want to see her again because now we know she can knock people out and she can go the distance and have a fun fight in the distance. So fuck it. Br bring her back. And apparently, no bonus for her, which I'm okay with since nobody was knocked out. Um, but I will say, bring her back. Ah. 
Definitely got to bring her back. Try I got the call. Oh, no question about it. <laughs> they definitely got that call. Up next is Shalarm. Shalarm? I guess it's Callarm, maybe? <laughs> Car alarm? Or oh, Shalarm, apparently is how they pronounce it. Against Muhammad Segi. 20 versus 27. Shalarm is 27. Jesus Christ. This should be a good one, folks. We have nothing but Muay Thai up next. So this is what we. This is what's going down so far. Only three fights, three decisions in a row. Uh, but I got to say, the Muay Thai fights better than the MMA. And then we now have our top three for the Friday fights portion. Of course, Shalarm Ferrari Fairtex is fighting, and Sexan is the main prelim, main card. Sagrangarm Numsarin. Same Poon and Yad, uh, same Poon. Uh, let's see, Kung Chai, Coco, and Hung Selec, and of course, Jin Selec and Chorfa. So we have 12 fights in total. Only three have, uh, gone down so far. We only have three left in our preliminary portion. So we're still in the. We're, we're, we're inching towards the middle of the card here. You watched the draft last night, my Eagles. Uh, we're killing it last night. Yeah, I watched. I watched my Ravens fumble last night by drafting another wide receiver. That's going to be a bust in two years. <laughs> they drafted. It's funny. The last time they drafted a wideout, it was Hollywood Brown, and his short ass lasted on the team. I think like three, four seasons. They drafted another midget receiver, and he probably ain't going to last any more than two seasons. So they. I, I saw them fumble that bag. Eagles got better though. Uh, Iran was Thailand, 20-year-old kid about to get a uh, near-death experience. <laughs> I think you're right. Oh, man. Let's see. Belichick, uh, building a defense every draft. When he pronounced his name, car alarm. <laughs> I love how it's just like, I, I love it. It's like Shalarm, Shalarm, car alarm. He may as well call himself car alarm. That, that should be his American name, if anything. <laughs> First and last. To me, it seems like 1FC is flying these Western fighters into Thailand, letting him fight as often as possible to save money. That is exactly what they're doing, Nas. You are 100% correct. They're bringing in Western fighters, and they're just saying, fuck it, if you want to fight, you can have it. All you need to do is be exciting. So you're absolutely right. They're doing that so they don't have to pay some of the uh, some of the bigger names. They don't like they're saving their money for the Amazon Prime cars, but you're right. For Lumpany, that's exactly what they're doing. <laughs> that is exactly what they're doing. The only stars we ever saw in the Lumpany series was when it was the debut, like the celebration, and they had Nango beat up a bum. That was like I think the only time we ever saw like a big name out there. Other than that, they're like, fuck it. We'll just let the Westerners beat up these Thai guys and then we'll 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 save the rest of our money for when Prime comes around. Cheers, everybody. This should be fun. This is at 136. So that's weird. Usually with Muay Thai, the lower in weight, the better the fight. I don't think this will be a slow fight. Usually the featherweight Muay Thai ones aren't slow fights. But it is kind of crazy how in Muay Thai, the lower in weight you get, the better quality of a fight you get. Because big dudes are definitely not built for Muay Thai, even though there are some big dudes that fight in Muay Thai. And what the fuck? Why are we getting the... Uh the Y crew right now, this ain't the main event of the fucking prelims. Or did these two have it in the contract that they want to do a Y crew? I think that's how they do it, maybe? Hmm. It's weird. They're they're just doing it randomly now, it seems like. I love how Sadeki's just casually walking around like, hey, I'm just going to nod every corner. Meanwhile, uh, Shalom, a.k.a. Carlarm, is, is doing a whole prayer song route. I mean, a whole prayer dance routine here. Let's see, they're boycotting Holskin because he doesn't want to do a tournament. He gets paid more for one single fight than the tournament deal. They're pretty nasty everywhere. <laughs> I was about to say, I was wondering what happened to Nikki Holskin. I think they got Holskin on the Fight Night 11 card. Well, at least, well, they're trying to anyway. I don't know if they actually got him, but you're right though. I think that's the hilarious. But the fact they're boycotting Holskin makes sense. 
Because I, I haven't seen that motherfucker in one in a long time. I don't even remember the last fight he had at one championship. It's been so long. So that makes sense if, if they really are boycotting him there. I thought they were trying to get him for a card, but I guess they're I guess they're reneging. I guess they're like, okay, are you ready to do business? And he's like, nah. Let's see, ruthless. They are pretty ruthless, bro. You ain't lying. Muhammad now has Muhammad's not ready to go. He just nodded to all four corners and went back to his corner. Oh, now we have is this is this voice like AI or something? <laughs> It's it's either AI or they have Henny Lardit somewhere in a bathroom. Let's see, he said it in an interview. Ah. That means they're probably they're they're probably still fucking with him then. If it was recent, then if he said it recently, then yeah, that means they're still fucking with him, which is a shame. Ah, Shalarm is actually a lumpany stadium though, which is crazy. I mean a stadium champion, I should say. 2917 ain't bad for old Carlar. So he's a lumpy stadium champion. That means he should be he he should be fucking comfortable in this situation, which I imagine he is. They're treating this like a main event of the prelims, even though it's not. This must be a big fight, I imagine. Either that or somebody had it in the contract that they want to do a white crew. Let's see, about three weeks ago. Oh yeah, okay. So since it is recent, yeah, they're still fucking with him. That's a shame. Here we go. Round one. Do you think we reach UFC Apex 100 uh, this within the calendar year? I hope not. I think we may. I think so. Oh, my God. Already out of the gate. Shalom just knocked down Sagi, but They didn't call it a knockdown. They called it a push down. Right out the fucking gate. Wow. I think we might, unfortunately, Dub C. You might be right. And, by the way, good catch of a kick by uh, Muhammad. And he fucking dumped him right after that. Damn. So, out of the gate, they're already swinging. Good low kick by Muhammad. Both crack shins right there. That was loud as hell. It sounded like somebody's leg might have snapped. Good jab by Muhammad. Counter by Shalarm. By Shalarm. Good low by Shalarm. Good low by Muhammad. One, two by Shalarm. Good push kick by Shalarm and a jab. Good jab by Muhammad. Low kick by Muhammad. Good catch of a kick there by Shalarm and landed at uh, that one two after he caught the kick from Sadegi. Now Sadegi gonna pay him back and catch his kick. Didn't land a punch after it though. Now Shalom and Sadegi just square up with one another. Shalom with a nice kick to the body. Muhammad Sadegi having a having an all right uh, beginning of the round here, but mostly Shalom. They both land a catch and a kick on each other. They're just matching each other strike for strike right now. Good one, two. Damn. That one, two missed, and fucking Shalarm actually rocked him with the right. Low kick by Sadegi missed. Another low kick by Sadegi's not there. One, two by Shalarm, and a nice counter by Sadegi. Good jab by Sadegi. One, two by Sadegi. Kick to the body, kick to the body. Good low kick by Sadegi. Ooh, one two by Sadegi and a good counter by Shalarm. Low kick by Shalarm. Now they're tying up, both landing knees. Ooh, and they both just stumbled to the fucking ground. Actually, not even stumble. I think they said Sadegi more so slammed him there. Elbow missed by Shalarm. Good counter by Sadegi. Thirty seconds ago. Crazy opening round right there. I get by Sadegi misses, but a good counter by Shalarm is there. Good low kick by Shalarm and a good counter by Sadegi. Good jab by Sadegi. Good kick by Shalarm. Sadegi with a push kick that misses 10 seconds ago. Low kick by Shalarm and Sadegi. Hook and a high kick miss. There's the end of the round. Not a bad first round. Let's see. Many of you seen Ultimate Self Defense Championship. Someone upon it this week's interesting. They're only at the third episode now, so it's early to get into it. I've never heard of it, but I definitely uh I definitely will look into it though. 
it sounds interesting. Levels to the shit. I think halfway apex. Half away have apex. I'm hoping for that, but it feels like it might be majority apex, and I'm sick of it already. One championship suit for legs get tweak interest from Muay Thai. One FC have to make one FC Muay Thai look authentic. Well, they call it Muay Thai championship. I know a lot of the purists don't like it. That's for damn sure. They they hate uh, the small gloves. They hate the MMA in it. You know what I mean? So yeah, it doesn't surprise me that. Uh, Part of the government wants a little bit of the pie there. Now that it's Muay Thai Entertainment to them. Let's see who you got, Jay. Probably going to lean more toward uh, Shalarm in the first round. Sadegi with some with some good strikes, but I think Shalarm won that round right there. Round number two now underway. Let's see. Oh, good low kick by both. Oh, both land low. High kick by Sadegi, not quite there. Oh, good a hook there by Shalom. Low kick by Sadegi. Sadegi started to turn it up. Good push kick by Sadegi now. Sadegi really starting to turn it up. Let's see. Who you got? You're not putting any pressure on the Iranian. Yeah, he is kind of he is laying back a lot. Able to control, but too laid back. And now Sadegi really starting to pour on the pressure. Starting to pour it on just a little bit. This is actually a really good start to the round right there. Matching the kicks of Salarm and a good high kick that misses. Uh, what's going on, Fatara? Fatara says it's 13 fight, but a rainy guy calm than I expect from starter. Absolutely. Both seemed like they were relatively relatively calm with Shalom doing a little bit better, but now Sadegi's starting to turn it up. Really starting to turn up the pressure here. Good hook behind the guard. Very aggressive at the gate. Now some knees. Oh, fucking Shalom tried to slam him, but he fell instead. Oh, wow. They're trying to get in each other's heads now. It's a fucking psychological battle. High kick by Sadegi, and it fucking not a knockdown on Shalar, really? Bro, I I don't know. He fell throwing that kick, and he fucking landed it on him, but wow, they called it a slip. Interesting. No knockdown. Excellent, though, by Sadegi. Sadegi is turning up the aggression all the way now in this round. Shalar with a nice jab. Goes with a spinning back elbow. Oh, they're getting really aggressive now. They're getting extremely aggressive in the clinch. Crazy how much they've turned it up. Good hook by Sadegi. Low kick by Shalom to the lead leg. Good jab by Sadegi and a low kick. One, two, counter by Shalom. Kick to the body by Sadegi. Catch of a kick by Shalom and he fucking trips him down. Good for catching a kick and a trip. Exchanging some hooks. Nice body kick by Shalarm. A high kick by Sadegi. Just missed the mark. Shalarm had to move out of the fucking way of that. Hold on. Ankle sock down on the right leg of uh, Shalarm. Are they going to pause the clock here or what? Get it back up there. Come on, ref. Time back in. 28 seconds to go. Both land low kicks. Good jab, good high kick by Shalom. Good punch, good punch. Okay, hold on, I gotta let their clock catch up to mine. Damn, they're exchanging the body into the body with the kicks. And now a low kick by Sadegi to end the exchange. Kick to the body by Sadegi. Good counter jab by Shalom. Here we go. 15 seconds to go. Somebody with a 10 second clapper prematurely there. Kick to the body by Shalarm. Sadegi tries to go with a jab, but Shalarm ducked that shit. Either that or it fell. He just dropped to the ground and avoided getting his head taken off. Two rounds down. A lot of action. I think that might be one to one. I gave Shalarm round one. I'm giving Sadegi round two. Sadegi definitely, definitely won round two. Way more aggressive. Uh, he was he was looking for a kill that entire round, but Shalarm, being the tough man he is, just stood in there with him. But still, you got to reward aggression. You got to reward aggression. Ooh. Good catch of a kick and then a little trip. There's a push kick. Good hook. See, I like the switch kick from Iran. Second round KO fuckery. <laughs> See, it's not government organization, one private organization. 
LA head rival will promote uh, promotion to Thailand. Eh, they probably just want some money. They're just going to get a little settlement, and then one's just going to continue doing what they do. Quadruple. See? <laughs> Full on fight like it, at least. There's a little trip by Sadegi. And one, two by Shalarm, and a nice kick. High kick by Sadegi. They're both exchanging kicks now. Aggression important, pace so important. Absolutely. Got to keep up the aggression. Both going for kicks. Both going for punches now. Go one, two, kick to the body. High kick by Sadegi. Good jab by Shalarm. Good jab by Sadegi. Jab by Shalarm. Good kick to the body by Sadegi. Low kick by Sadegi. One, two by Shalarm. Kick to the body by Shalarm. And a low kick by Sadegi. One, two by Sadegi. And he rocks Shalarm. And now Sadegi going to push him and hunt him down. Good knees for both. Ref going to jump in there, separate him. Oh, shit. Good kind of a kick by Sadegi. Sadegi with his foot right back on the gas. Low kick, high kick miss, but that counter punch by Shalarm did not. Shalarm with a high kick that does not land. Oh, shit. They both land punches up, up on each other. They were literally like just face to face up against the ropes. Fucking Sadegi trying to literally just pour on the pressure, but Shalarm able to stand in there with him. Good jab for Sadegi and a high kick by, uh, by Shalarm. Good jab by Shalarm. Now they're back in the center away from the ropes. They're just going to match each other now. I can, I can tell. Yeah, both land jabs at the same time. Oh, shit. Another straight jab by Shalarm. Shit. Rod thinks so aggressive. Great scraps as OB. Absolutely, man. This is an amazing fight. Good high kick by Sadegi. Sadegi is impressing the hell out of me. This is amazing. Very aggressive. Shalarm equally tough. Good catch of a kick by Shalarm. Going for the punches now on Sadegi. But now they break away. Low kick by Sadegi. Low kick by Shalom. Good strike to the body by Shalom. Sadegi with a good jab. 30 seconds to go. Good high kick. Oh, good strike again. Good high kick now by Shalar. Strike again. Ten seconds to go. Good push kick for Shalar. And they go down. Good catch of a kick, and Shalar just trips him to the floor. End of the fight. Good shit, man. That last round was it, it's weird. Tough to score. Tough to score, but I I could see them giving Sadegi the win there. Oh, that's not bad at all. Put that right over here. There we go. The animal room I'll put right up here. There was the push kick. Nice high kick by Shalarm. Definitely one of the more entertaining fights and competitive fights we've seen in this one. I think Sadegi... Oh, God. Oof. See, 2 to 1 Shalarm. Crazy is only 14th fight. Friday morning fight. How about that? Already 14 of these things. 2 to 1 Shalarm. They probably will give it to Shalarm knowing these judges. Very good fight, though. Shalarm had, a, I'd say, probably his best round of the fight in that third round, but I wonder what they're going to score the third round, actually. First two was 1 to 1, but that third round, I wonder what they're going to score it. Probably give it a Shalarm fight, I guess. Let's see. Majority decision. Wow. Ah, they gave it to him by majority decision. Oh, shit. Huh. Not a unanimous decision, but a majority decision. Hmm. Not surprising that they gave it to him, but majority decision? That is a that is an interesting way to see it. Let's see. Iran was rocked. Have you ever noticed that one championship speeds up? Uh, of the fights they uploaded to YouTube. It's kind of annoying. I guess they think it's more interesting, exciting, sped up. Uh, I have not noticed that, but I guess maybe they try to do it for entertainment effect. But that is interesting. I never saw that. 
A lot more Friday. Shalom got it. Yeah. This, like, it, like, you know, majority decision, though? Very interesting. But they said majority instead of unanimous. But at least the right guy got the win. Or at least the guy they felt was right got the win. And up next is Ferrari Fairtex against Faria? Or I guess Faria? Faria? And this one is yet another catch weight. Jesus, how many catch weights we got on this thing? And we still got more. Let's see, 149, 142. This one's 149. Jesus. Catch weights all over the damn place on this card. UFC does the same thing. Meridian. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That is true. I don't know why they do it. I like the whole experience. Yeah. That is true. That some of the UFC, like some of the UFC, like uh, fights that they replay, they do speed up a little bit. That actually is a good point. I don't know why they do that. By the way, who is Is that Faria? Yeah, it is. But yeah, that is a bit of an interesting thing. I never noticed that, I guess. But that is a little weird. By the way, how many... Yeah, let me see something. Let, let me see something. So let's see. Catch wits on this card. One, two. By the way, majority decision win. Three, four, five, six, seven... Eight. Jesus Christ. Eight catchweight fights. God damn. Why? <laughs> only like a only like a few fights on the card where it's like a proper weight class. Everything else is just catch weight all over the place. That's interesting. I didn't notice that UFC did it too. Maybe they don't speed it up quite as much. Yeah, that's true. Maybe they did, yeah, I was about to say they probably don't do it as much where they try to make it too noticeable, but uh, it wouldn't surprise me if they were doing that shit, too. Let's see. One doesn't show strikes landed. And the other stats, Sadie of G. Uh, it's to pay commercials. Sometimes fighters aren't ready, etc., etc. It's a 6 with 7. By the way, we have Faria now inside the ring. And now Ferrari Fairtex. How did Ferrari do in his last fight? I think he lost, I believe, right? Yeah, he was knocked out. Last win was in 2022, uh, but lost to Fabio Hayes. That's right. Hayes went in there and knocked his ass out. At least there's still a lot of people. There's some woman screaming for a Ferrari. Jesus Christ. Somebody get her. Somebody get her a fucking, I don't know, get her something. Somebody go get that girl. You could definitely miss key commentary moments. Also, when sped up, if it does one is even more fucked up. Uh, let's see, I am AFK once in a while, yard of construction, but took the day off, and I get paid, <laughs> I'm way up for man. <laughs> it's all good, brother. Good to have you around, though. Let's see, no, nice. wait a second, you guys watch lots of events, uh, then you watch the same fights, why? I guess some people like to watch the replay of them, just to see if they miss something, or maybe they miss the fight, and they only listen to, like, commentary from me or something. So, I do know a lot of people that like to do that. Uh, fight game full of fuckery, believe that, no doubt. ESPN track would be great for these, a strike counter. Yeah, that would be great, actually. That would be a lot easier. Like, they don't even have it on the website, which is a damn shame. Uh, let's see, maybe gotta watch the fight back. First reaction isn't always right. That's true. I know I've had to do that. I know I've, I've done that a few times. Or, like, if a fighter's fight is coming up, I'll watch, like, their previous fight just to see if there's certain things I should look out for. Just every now and again, though. Cheers, everybody. There we go. Twelve and zero for Furia. So. Pretty pretty modest record. Not not like one of those crazy records you expect to hear from a kickboxer or a Muay Thai fighter, but still good. Probably just getting into the sport of anything. Hold up. There we go. Let's 
see i'll watch a hundred times dustin and justin oh no doubt gang gang what's going on pulse great to see you bro hope all is well your way my dude i know you're happy after last night's draft that was some good shit by the way let's see i've been watching a ton of like, 1fc fights oh yeah Definitely got to watch during the years when they allowed soccer kicks and shit. Those, those, those were lit times. Here we go, folks. Round one. By the way, these two are at 149. Bit heavy for Muay Thai. Usually I like my Thai fighters on the, on the smaller end, but this will work. Oh my god, that's a high kick by fucking Ferrari. Jesus Christ, he backed up uh, Emnipur. Or a mini poor. A mini poor. <laughs> I, I, I like that last name. A, mini, a mini poor. A miniature poor, that is. Not a big poor, but a mini poor. Now a mini poor going after Ferrari. He needs to pour on a little bit of violence here. This is a mini poor. Low kick for a Ferrari. Ferrari might put his foot on the fucking gas. Mini poor with a three piece. And mini poor charger forward on him with a three piece. High kick for Ferrari. Good hook for Ferrari. Like, couple check hooks. Good one, two there for Ferrari. Oh, shit. Oh, the mini poor almost landed one. Good one, two for a mini poor. Shit, good one, two for a mini poor. Now they break away. Let's see, I do, that makes sense to me. Would you ever do Raiders watch parties? Oh, we were flooded by Ra Raiders fans. I'd do a Raiders watch party. That sounds like fun. Uh, let's see, a lot of Iranians, <laughs> says AJ. You ain't lying, man. They're they're bringing in all of the Western fighters to come out here for this fucking shit. For, for this uh, violence fest out in Lumpany. The high kicks for Ferrari. Another one for Ferrari. Two piece now for for Omnipore. Omnipore are gonna tie up with him immediately. Now they knuckle up. There's a good one too for a mini poor. High kick for Ferrari lands to the head. That time the roundhouse lands to the body. He tries to go to the head this time, but it's getting blocked. That one landed flush though. A mini poor ate that. God damn. Miniport took that high kick. That one hit him definitely in the ear. I know his ear is going to be ringing for a bit. Push kick by Ferrari. Push kick by Ferrari. High kick by Ferrari. Three piece by Miniport, who's going to go in there and just tie up with him, making a dirty fight. Dirty, dirty clinch striking. They break away. Jab by Ferrari. And Miniport is leaking a bit. Damn! Three piece by a mini poor! He didn't drop Ferrari! God damn! Ferrari is back up, but he ate that three piece. Ferrari acting like he alright. I don't know about that. Red breaking him away. Oh shit. A mini poor pour on the violence! That's right! Oh! Oh! Ferrari tagged him with a cross! Fuck! Yo! Oh my god! Fucking hell! Woo! Woo! I can't believe it. Damn. And Ferrari is bleeding bad after that. He got fucking dropped. God damn. How did he get back up? He clipped him, finished it. Ferrari's weakness, chin's glass. Let's see. UK, UC Fur, uh, 31st event. Dana ran on YouTube. We should do Watch Party for us. Time like Throwback Thursday. Yeah, we can do that one day. Definitely do that one day. Oh, shit. They're showing that replay. That was a beautiful one, too, by a mini poor. And there's the one that dropped him. There was a three piece there. Oh, my God. Let's see. A bloody fucking mess. Full on, man. The blood is leaking. The blood is absolutely there. Jesus Christ. Let's see. There we go. Second round. Oh, yeah. That blood is pouring. Jesus Christ. God damn, a mini poor is the one leaking too. That's the crazy part. The Indian guy is the one leaking. I don't know how he's leaking. I guess it was from the head kick he ate, maybe, but damn. Ferrari about to get hit in that damn chin. Three piece, four piece. Look at a mini poor. He's about to knock him out. He's about to knock out Ferrari. 
He is a hunting Ferrari. Oh my God, one, two again. Some woman is screaming. Can't have a kick by a mini poor. He's pissed. Oh my God, he tried to dump him out the... Oh shit, he tried to dump him out the ring. Oh my God, a mini poor is on the hunt right now. He is hunting down Ferrari. Ferrari's holding on so he doesn't die. A mini poor is hunting this man. He's trying to fatality him. He's trying to get a fatality. Good elbows. Oh my God, and a mini poor is pouring blood. There is poor, there is like blood pouring out of a mini boar. Ferrari clinching him, tries to throw a knee, almost gets dumped out the fucking ring. Good jab again by Ferrari, one, two by a mini poor. Ooh, a mini poor, what a hook! Yeah, he's gonna kill this man. Fucking Ferrari can barely stand. He's throwing a knee. Oh, a mini poor in the hut. One, two by a mini poor. Oh, Jesus. This is crazy. How is Ferrari not dead yet? There's another one that lands flush on Ferrari! And look at a mini poor just throwing Ferrari around. Right hand by a mini poor who was pouring blood from the side of his face. His face is just a, a bloody fucking mess. And now blood getting all over Ferrari. One, two by a mini poor. Ferrari's getting backed up. Hook and an uppercut by Ferrari. Another hook by a mini poor. Jesus, he's hunting this man. He is hunting this man down. Ferrari is getting ran off the fucking road, folks. The Ferrari is getting ran off the fucking road. Oh! Good hook by a mini poor. Ferrari's trying to throw a kick to the body, trying to fight back. Good hook to the body, a mini poor with a jab to the body. Good elbow by Ferrari. Oh shit! A mini poor with a straight jab. A mini poor saying, come on, motherfucker. And Ferrari throws some kicks. Ferrari looks like he's gassed. Holy shit. This is a war of attrition. Oh no! No, they're looking at the cut on the mini poor. No! Oh no! Don't call it off. Do not call this off. We need somebody to die here. Just clean the blood, yeah, clean the blood up and get the fuck out of there. Clean the, yeah, get, yeah, I'm about to say, ref, drag his ass back in there. Thank you, there we go. Clean him up and let's go. Let's get an ending to this shit. Oh, right in by a mini poor. He's hunting him now. Jazz by a mini poor. Hold on, I gotta let the, their clock catch up to mine. They paused it a bit before I did. Oh, a low kick by Ferrari. Right hand by Mini Poor. Here we go. Oh, Mini Poor with a one two. A Mini Poor bleeding again. Yeah, that shit is starting to gush again. God damn. That blood is coming down fast. Kick to the body by Ferrari. Good hooks by Mini Poor. Oh. Good hook to the body. Good job by Mini Poor. And Ferrari's hurt. Good elbow by Ferrari to try to stay alive. Ten seconds to go. Look to the body. Good one, two, four, mini poor. Another one there. Another jab by mini poor. There's the end of the round. <laughs> Fuck. Wow. What a fucking round. Ferrari is still in this shit somehow. Still in this. Here we go. Still going on. This ref. <laughs> Them lefts. Uh, if Iranian guy survive cut, he gonna win. He got KO rule favor him. I think so too, man. I'm surprised he's actually still in this, to be honest. I thought they were gonna stop it, but thank fuck they didn't. We got another round left, AJ. Somehow nice, is Zach. Good to see you, by the way, Zach. Hope you're doing well, my dude. This is a great way to start a Friday. Who you guys is Michael Jordan. I'll tell you what, I came in here hoping Ferrari did well, but I kind of want a mini poor to win now <laughs> after seeing that. A mini poor is so damn close. So damn close to trying to get this man out of there. Ferrari, though, was impressing me with his stamina. Surprise! Even though he has a chin that's absolute glass, I'm surprised he's still in there. That is a big-ass thing of Vaseline they have on a mini poor's face. They're, they really try to work on that cut. YouTube chat, for one, is oh, well. I took a look for a second to understand. It's like a message, man. They're going crazy in there, I imagine. 250 to go. Good knee to the body by Ferrari. One, two, by a mini poor. Step in knee by Ferrari. Good job by a mini poor. Push kick by a mini poor. A mini poor with a jab. Low kick by Ferrari. Push kick by a mini poor. One, two, by Ferrari. One, two, three, by a mini poor. Straight jab by a mini poor. Another jab. Good uppercuts. And by the way, the blood is pouring down once again on a mini poor. He, the left side of his face is just dark red. Good knee by Ferrari. One, two by a mini poor. What a, oh my god, I'm going back and forth. 
And now he just leaned to the ropes in this clinch. This is crazy. This is absolutely insane. Jab by Mini Poor. Push kick by Ferrari. Oh, good straight jab by Mini Poor after the low kick by Ferrari. One two by a Mini Poor, but he missed. Good elbow by Ferrari. This is crazy. Jab by Mini Poor. They tie up. Both land knees again. Wow. Oh my god, and look at the blood on a mini poor's face. That man is leaking. He is leaking bad. Good push kick from him. There's more blood. Oh my god, yeah, it's getting worse and worse with every strike. Good right hand by Ferrari. After a mini poor landed the knee, they tie up and the ref's gonna separate him. Good god, this man is literally just spraying his blood all over the damn place. Every strike that lands on, blood's flying. Good knee by Mini Poor and knee by Ferrari. They're fighting to the death. Good to see you, far on, my brother. This is absolutely violence. This is violence personified. How are they not even gas this OB, bro? That's what I'm wondering. They're still fucking going. How is Ferrari alive? Fucking Matrix move for Ferrari. Ferrari barely fucking dodged that kick. Good job by Mini Poor. Fuck, this is absolute violence like here. How y'all doing, man? Oh, I'm loving life right now, man. This is amazing. Amazing fucking fight. Good kick to the body. Plus Farhan. We got fucking glory tomorrow, bro. I know you're excited. We got fucking glory. It's a glory weekend, a BKFC weekend. It's going to be so much fucking fun. UFC mid, but at least we got glory in BKFC after this shit. Good one, two, four, mini poor, and Ferrari. This is beautiful. Violence personified. One two by a mini poor. Another one two by a mini poor. Ivan is and look at him. A mini poor is like, come on, motherfucker, kill me. A spin kick by Ferrari. A mini poor is pressing forward and he's daring him. He's daring Ferrari to get in there. One two by a mini poor. Ten seconds. Good job by a mini poor. He's leaking blood and shouting at Ferrari to press forward on him. One two four mini poor. And there's the fight. God damn. That was fucking. Some Mortal Kombat shit. He's like, kill me, damn it. Come on, fight to the death. <laughs> Fatality, blood sport, violence. They found a bitch that's early. How they still go? That's what I'm saying. Bro, this is crazy. Blood sport, violence. I, man. Th this is what I'm talking about right here, man. One championship's Muay Thai is top tier. This is this is top tier violence. Wow, says AJ, bro. I'm telling y'all. we oh. This is insanity. That fucking beautiful spinning roundhouse by Ferrari that was blocked by a mini poor and he fucking countered it with a jab. A mini poor had blood just leaking down his face and he was begging Ferrari, stand in here with me. Do you got Jay? It's rough, man. It's it's rough. I wanna give it to a mini poor. I, I really do, especially for the knockdown earlier. I want to give it to him. Only thing is he bled all over the damn place, even though I don't think that blood might affect him, but I wanna give it to him. I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, well, they don't do draws. It's going to be a split, probably. All three judges, what? Oh, shit. By unanimous decision. Oh, they gave it to Fer Oh, no, they gave it to a minute four. Oh, I thought they were giving it to Ferrari. Wow. They gave it to the right guy. They gave it to the right man. I thought they were giving it to Ferrari. Oh, shit. <laughs> wow. I was about to say, that man bled for nothing. That's the right call. That is the right call. He knocked that man down, and he he was begging for Ferrari to stand there with him. Ferrari had to, he had to fight to survive for the most part, so that was the right call. Eddie Alvarez versus Mendez. Excited for that, too, so far. Absolutely, brother. I can't wait for that. By the way, we're doing Glory and BKFC and UFC in the same show tomorrow, so it's going to be fun. What a fight. 50K, please, says Nas. I agree, Nas. Got to give them both 50K for that. Got to give them that fucking bot bonus. Brutal but great. Uh, let's see. That was a great fight. Hovering referee nearly needs to step back. It's really distracting. I agree. You guys did mention it before. That referee is way too fucking close. I can 100% agree with that. It is a little bit annoying at times. One of them things that you got to get adjusted to, I guess. But you're right, though. It is very annoying to see that. I'm not going for no man named Ferrari. <laughs> uh, for you got it. Both of them need a bonus. I agree. I would give them both a bonus for that. I'd give them a bonus. I still say I should have given them a line. Told them to fight to the death. <laughs> you have to retire. Road Machine 10K. Both says Nas. I agree with that. You got to give them both a bonus for that. 
He just is happy when Bisbee beat Anderson Silva. Well deserves his OB. I agree. Well deserved victory right there for a mini poor. I tell you though, I tell you what though, folks, a little little rough for Ferrari, man. A little rough for Ferrari. That's now two losses in a row on one Friday fights. Hasn't won a fight since 2022, but I think they'll put him back on again soon for a mini poor. This is another win. Yeah, this is now two fight two fights in a row on one Friday fights. He won back in 2023 split decision. Now unanimous over Ferrari. So he took out Hiroki and Ferrari. I hope we see more of this fucking warrior from Iran. We have to remember a lot of these guys' names because it's it's getting to the point now where a lot of the same names are going to appear on these cards. By the way, everybody, give me one moment. I'm going to sprint to the bathroom before Sexon gets out there. I'll be right back, everybody. Boom, back like I'm never left. Had a good thing I had my bathroom, like literally right there. He beat Ferrari Suzuki. What does this mean? He has against cars. <laughs> he, he, he must hate them damn cars, bro. Them fast ones, anyway. Need to train the UFC. Even though it's Glory Tournament, I'm going to call it K1 World Grand Prix. Farhan, we got the same <laughs> mindset, brother. In, in my mind, this is the K1 Grand Prix. <laughs> Shit, I've I've wanted a one-night kickboxing tournament so bad. That's how I'm going to look at it tomorrow, brother. Tomorrow's going to be a big day for us kickboxing fans. For taught a time of sex on life. He made money in one, two more, in two more fights. No, in two fights than he has uh, in his entire life. Wow. That man making the big money. I'm telling you what, man. Shatri changed the game in Muay Thai. He's now changing these fighters' lives. And seeing how they fight, I'm kind of glad he did. Because if you have if you have motherfuckers literally putting their lives on the line like this, you got to pay them right. Because that, that's the only way. Because if you don't pay these motherfuckers right, their bodies are going to break down. Their minds are going to break. They won't, be, they won't be as consistent. I like the fact that they're forcing them to fight for all this big money that they're making. I love it. Fighters earning their keep. Fighters always earn their keep, but it's good to see them actually get it from a promoter. You know what I'm saying? It's a rare thing out there. Uh, what were your honest thoughts on Matt Riddle's MMA career? Um, I have a feeling he his MMA career could have gone somewhere if the if the rules on weed that exist now existed back when he was a fighter. Only reason why his cut, career was cut short was because they, they tested for weed. Uh, and, of course, now they don't give a fuck about it anymore. You know, they they went with a, they used to have a threshold, but now they just kind of don't give a fuck. Uh, if Riddle was able to use weed, I believe he would have gone far. So I'm please post a link for tomorrow's glory event. So I'll play that organization. It says, Pullman, well, you're in the Discord, so uh, everybody's going to know how to watch all three events tomorrow. I know it's ESPN+. Plus. For for uh for the UFC, for BKFC, they should have done it on pay per view for BKFC, but it's just on their app. So I'll show everybody how to use that. And of course for Glory, uh, it's on Glory fights, but of course I'll have uh I'll have the source up for that one. Uh, let's see in Discord. Oh yeah, like tomorrow, all you have to do is just keep it locked to the Discord tomorrow, and and you'll have everything. You see, you can go back to the last links. Couldn't just stop, <laughs> says Tub C. Pretty much. He wanted he wanted the Diaz exemptions, but because he didn't get that shit, because now nowadays, um, you know, they just don't give a fuck about it. But 
Yeah, if those parameters were in, he probably would have gone further in MMA. See, they're all on the same links. Uh, well, pretty much. Well, anyways, I know that tomorrow, tomorrow's when they're probably going to have them all up. So if you're in the Discord, just look out for it tomorrow, uh, and everything will be right up there. It's funny because tomorrow, like with those three big events, I know BKFC is probably going to be the most popular, if I had to guess. Just because of all the names that are on the card and shit, but it's going to be a good day tomorrow either way, though. I'm looking forward to it. Let's see. Put this up over here. Let's see. Riddle's okay. Maybe more cash than ever. Definitely. He's definitely good now. But yeah, MMA career would have gone further if uh, those rules were not in place for him. Uh, let's see. By the way, we now have Sexon walking out to the ring. Walking out first. Sexon, by the way, is, uh, it's, hold on, let me see what his run's been like so far. Double check on that. Okay, so yeah, first Friday night, well, Friday fights, he beat Tyson Harrison. By the way, Harrison's been on a roll since that fight, funny enough. He actually has a fight booked, I think it's on this, uh, one lump and he's 17, it's either 17 or 16, I have to look and see which card it is, but I know he's been booked. Uh, and then, of course, unanimous decision win for Sexon uh, back in one Friday Fights number nine. Clancy, I don't remember. By the way, good to see you. Kanaka, aloha to you, my brother. Hope everything is good your way. Oh, man, so this guy lost to Pong Siri and to Wanchi. God damn. So Sean Clancy's been sacrificed to two big names in the division. So Clancy needs a win. Sexon, of course, just... Trying to keep on keep on rolling. So this feels like a sacrifice being fed to Sex Song. It feels like that. We'll see if it actually plays out that way. Because we see some upsets every now and again. But the Irish guy is definitely a uh, dog. He is a WBC Muay Thai champion though. Is Sean Clancy. So hey. 43-22 is his Muay Thai record. Is Sean Clubber Clancy. So that's not a bad record. He's not a bum, but he is a guy that often gets sacrificed to the bigger name fighters in one. But hey, maybe he'll rise to the occasion one of these days. I don't know if it'll happen here, though. The man who yields no one sex on. That is a long-ass nickname. His record. 195 and 74. God! 195 and 74. Holy shit. That that is insane to me. One ninety five and seventy four. God damn. That is hold up two hundred sixty nine total fights. Damn. Win or lose, whatever fights, uh, whatever sex on fights, gonna be damn fun. Says Fantara. You are right about that, my brother. I've always been entertained watching sex on fight. When they had him on the first lumpany card, I was like, okay, he's one of the people I want to see again, and I've been entertained ever since then. Here we go. Round one. Sex on. Sex on on a roll. Clancy, of course, trying to get his first Friday fight win. Ooh, good low kicks out the gate for Clancy, though. Low kick for Clancy. Low kick again for Clancy. Another low kick. One, two for Sex on, though. Low kick for Clancy. One, two for Sex on. Low kick for Clancy. Sex on trying to go for the overhand. Low kick for Clancy. Uppercuts now for Clancy. Uppercut and a cross. Low kick for Clancy. Oh, low kick. Right hand now for Clancy and for Sexon. Low kick for Clancy. Right hand for Sexon. Low kick, a fucking spinning elbow by Sexon. God damn. Goes for a body kick, a catch of it by Clancy. By the way, I think Clancy, is he bleeding? Yeah, he's bleeding. That elbow split him already. Oh, man, the Irishman is leaking blood. The Irishman's leaking. Spinning back elbow by six on. Almost lands. Oh, go for a spinning kick to the body. Almost landed. Fuck. Wow. 195.74 in the examiner's brain after he dies. What's he looks like? Clubber, cool name. Gonna go with Tom Sean Clancy. Uh, those leg kicks look effective. They definitely do. I'm surprised they're they're probably heavy, I think. At least it seems like it. Sexon's elbows are getting flush on him. There's a one-two. 
He's carving this, the, the Irishman up with these elbows, bro. This is crazy. Step in elbow. Oh, another elbow by Clancy. Good knee by Sexon. Knee by Sexon to the body. Another elbow. Shit, he's trying to carve this man up. He's trying to cut up his entire face. Back elbow. And now a kick to the body. Nice catch of a kick by Clancy and a low kick. Clancy with a four-piece. Good elbow by Clancy. Ooh, elbow by Sexon again. Another elbow. Another elbow. Fuck! That blood is coming down his face. He's being carved up. Another elbow. Shit! This is fucking... This is some filthy fucking shit. Spinning elbow to his head now. Bruh, Sexon's trying to murder this man. So many elbows. Another elbow already that cut. Bro, he is bleeding. Clancy's bleeding bad. Two piece, a good step in knee. Oh my god. This is this is some wild shit. <laughs> He's carving this man up like it's a damn like it's a damn like like uh Dub C would say a <laughs> fucking pumpkin. It's a pumpkin at Halloween. Jesus, carve him also like a turkey at holiday time. A good one two for fucking sex on. Another damn elbow. Clubber getting clubbed. <laughs> One. Oh my god his face is fried shit his face is totally fried man another elbow they show the close up on his face his shit is fried ah this is some nasty fucking shit oh yeah that, oh yeah they, they, he gonna need some stitches for that I haven't seen some one get beat up this bad <laughs> Uh, since before our back page of Craigslist got blocked. <laughs> you ain't lying, bro. This is crazy. There's a kick the body by Sexon, looking by Clancy. But these elbows by Sexon were carving this man up. The spinning elbow, the fucking standing 12 6, the side elbows, the traditional style. Sexon with the hooks and the elbows for days, carving this man up. He fried indeed. Uh, dang, dog. Full on. I've never seen someone's face get fried by with elbows like this. This is crazy. That man's face is completely, completely fried up. He's going to need stitches. <laughs> maybe some staples. Maybe. Actually, no, no maybe. He definitely will need some staples. Maybe in, like, the hairline or something. That round definitely goes to sex on. Let's see what Clancy got in round two. He's still, he's still alive, at least, only for the moment. There's a little slip by Sexon. Try to elbow him. Clancy going back with the kicks, but it don't matter. That cross by fucking Sexon hit him. Hitting him with the hook. Hitting him with the jab. Clancy trying to go to the body and the head. He looks way slower when throwing his strikes. Good jab by Clancy. Low kick by Clancy. Kick to the body by Sexon. High kick by Clancy. Good elbow by Clancy. Good jab by Sexon. Hook by Sexon's there as well. No elbows yet, but he's about to throw one. These elbows by Clancy are landing. They're landing on Sexon now. Oh, but Sexon responding with his own elbow. Oh. Oh. Clancy with some elbows. Oh, shit. <laughs> Bro, he trying to fight back. I got to give it to him. He trying to fight back. Back elbow by Sexon. Sexon lost the balance. Oh, shit. Elbow by Clancy. What the fuck? No way. I was about to say, this is crazy. One, two, three by Sexon. Good kick to the body by Clancy. Clancy going low. Holy shit. Bro, he had Sexon hurt. How? <laughs> what are these guys made of? This is crazy. The referee jumping in on this shit now. One, two for Clancy. Good kick to the body by Sexon. Low kick by Clancy. Low kick by Clancy. Sexon with a one, two. Fucking hit with a cross. Now the ref gonna jump in there. Break him up. Good one, too, by Clancy. Jab by Clancy. Kick to the body by Sexon. Sexon's elbow again. Splits open Clancy. They both fall down. Not a knockdown. He fell down. Clancy's face starting to once again leak. Yeah, he getting hit now. Sexon's like, fuck this guy. He's starting to hit him with the heat now with Sexon. Backing him up into the corner. Trying to murder him with another spinning elbow. Shit. That would have been a death blow if he would have landed that. Good knee by Clancy. Clancy for... Oh, man. Clancy is holding on for dear life. This man is fucking tough. He is tough as shit. Good kick to the body by Clancy. Now Clancy with some knees. Good knee by Sexon. Another knee by Sexon. And a knee by Clancy. Bro, this man... The man from Ireland is somehow still alive. Oh, they're looking at the cut now. Don't, don't, don't call it off. Just clean it up. Yeah, just clean, clean it up. 
Let the Irishman fight back. Clancy would kill McGregor. Facts. Oh, I agree with that. He killing him. Oh, bullshit! Bullshit! They stop it! No! 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 I wanted to see more! No! He wasn't dead yet. Come on, man. Come on, Doc. That's bullshit. That's bullshit. Come on, man. He wasn't dead yet. He was just starting his comeback. That's fucked up. He carved him up real bad, but come on, man. <sighs> wow. Bro, Clancy wanted to fight on. I feel so bad for him. Damn. Come on, man. He wanted to keep fighting. You're right, Fatari. He wanted. They both wanted to still go. They both did, especially Sexon. Sexon wanted to, and Clancy wanted to. That's fucked up. Let's see, bro. This is savage. Game over, bro. Bro, no way. BS cut. I'm, bro. I'm telling you. How do you stop it after that? He was bleeding worse in round one than here. I don't agree with that. I do not agree with that decision, man. I don't like that. You get you, you gotta let that man fight it out. Once they clean up he was good, that's bullshit putting up a hell of a fight. Yeah, rematch. We need a rematch, damn it. I need a rematch of this. Oh, that's fucked up. They they respect each other too. They're wearing each other's flags and showing respect. Sexon doesn't even look all that happy. He knows he was winning, but he didn't look happy. He wanted to finish that fight. And Clancy wanted to fight to the end too, man. Run it back. Run it back. We need a rematch of that, man. I know Clancy was getting fucked up. I acknowledge that. But he was fighting back. He was starting his comeback. Oh. Damn, ringside doctor fucked it up. He robbed that man of a, of a chance to come back. I feel so bad for Clancy, man. Bring him back immediately. Even Sexon is not happy with it. Sexon's like, damn, I wanted to finish that. Run it back. <laughs> Run it back. How can they not respect each other? Honor. Real, bro, they, they respect each other real heavy. You're right about that, my dude. Gotta run it back. Just seen AD is calling for 12 rounds with Jake Paul. <laughs> Fights 12 rounds, gonna get caught, do a little 6 8 round exhibition, get hit the judges. Absolutely. That man talking a lot of shit since he just got locked up and everything. You ain't lying about that. <laughs> See, he was landing shots for real. He was, man. Sexon also had a great fight with Tyson a few cards back since Nas. He definitely did. I think they got to run that one back. They got to they got to run that one back. Still very good fight though. I'm not mad at the fight, but yeah, they got to run that back. Let's see. Oh. By the way, everybody. Wow, three bonuses in a row. Oh shit, they gave him another one. Good fights, man. No doubt. Have a good one, y'all. I'm off for dinner. Hell yeah, Pullman. Have a good one, brother. I'll see you soon. I'll see you tomorrow for the big three. By the way, everybody, since tension went off to boxing, look who won championship just signed. They just signed motherfucking Takeru. Chatri just confirmed it himself. So the greatest jab, one of the best Japanese kickboxers today, who was in K1 and of course had the big match with Tenshin Nasakawa, he's now going to be going to one championship. I was waiting and wondering when they were going to finally sign this guy, and they finally fucking did it. Took him a long fucking time to do it, but at least they got it. He's going to be fun to watch. I just hope they invest in the kickboxing divisions, like the lighter weight kickboxing divisions. I hope they invest in it more now that they signed him. By the way, they're letting Sexon just uh, pretty much shout out all the fans and everything. Very good shit. And we're about to get to our main card, which is going to be kicked off by Sangranam and Chepichit. Chepichit, I guess is how you say it. I'll find out in a moment. I'll put that up. Let's see. He is selling in Thailand three bonuses. <laughs> I wonder if they will sign Francis. That's what I wonder. They're... they're, they're Talk, they, they're talking like they are, but I wonder if they can actually pull that off. I wonder the same thing you do, AJ. Palm me my dog. Let's see. Look, like I'm all caught up. So the post-fight interview is done, and the prelims are done, and now we get to our main card. They're going to fake like they're going to turn it off, but really they're going to just flip over to their main card coverage.
God damn. That is a beautiful prelim closer, by the way. Or prelim main event, I should say. That was fucking beautiful. Whew. The spinning elbow that landed. Yeah, he... Oh, my God. Clancy was really leaking, but he had moments of brilliance. He was actually starting to come back. I like Shadri. He was in an interview with Wonchil Sunday this week. He's into the violence for real. The only hire people that finishes. That's true. They have a policy where it's like if your style is not fan friendly, they pretty much uh, they don't invite you back and don't sign you to a contract. It's it's wild, but I love it. Fataro, if one continue to pay bonuses, this huge paradigm shift gonna happen. A Muay Thai fighter gonna be favored so much more than technical. I agree. I agree. The technical fighters are going to be phased out, and the action fighters are going to be put to the forefront. Especially with all these bonuses on the line, they're all going to want, be willing to fight for the, uh, basically fight for honor and for money. I love the old highlights from one of these shows. Ten thousand American money said the tallest tomorrow because they're making the final offer. It'll be interesting. I honestly want to see Francis fight, get him signed, perfect placement for DJ. Absolutely, they could build one's heavyweight division around him because right now all they have is like Anatoly. They have Rug Rug. Um, and uh, Arjun Balar, when he actually fights, he doesn't fight all that often. He's a runner, but when he fights, he's good. They have like a few names, but they still need to add on talent, you know what I'm saying, for a full division. Because guys like Brandon Vera are retired. Unlung Saint tried the heavyweight move, didn't really work out. So, uh, one needs to build up their heavyweight division for MMA, but you're absolutely right. If, if they sign Francis, they can build around him and get him more challengers. So, I agree 100%. By the way, they're showing old highlights, of course. Commercial break shit. And let's see. Cheers, by the way, everybody. Gotta love it. Animal Room is alive and well right now. And really, folks, this is just the beginning of a fun weekend ahead. Remember, folks, tomorrow, this is kind of the breakdown for tomorrow. We have Glory 85, of course, with the heavyweight tournament. The heavyweight, that's a light heavyweight bout. But they have two heavyweight fights at the bottom. This one, Sylvia R. and Aggie on, And then, of course, Willness and Asaro. Winner then moves on to fight in the main event in the finals. And, of course, this is the co-main event, Myrtle Gronard. UFC also tomorrow starts at 4 o'clock. Uh, and then, of course, this is the big event of the night. I'm going to be live for all three. Mike Perry, Luke Rockhold in the main event. Co-main event, Mendez Alvarez. Other fights include Rowdy Beck Rawlings, another former UFC fighter. Oh, the bathroom break variety against Ferreira. And then, of course, there's, there's, there's this big fucking brawl right here. Ben Rothwell, and of course Copeland, I believe, uh, hold on, is this Gary Copeland, Josh Copeland, yeah, that's right, he's an MMA fighter, that's right, former MMA fighter, anyway, he will be there, oh shit, hold up, <laughs> but yes, he will be on the card as well, and let me see how this stacks up with everybody else, Chris Camozzi is on there, uh, let's see, I think that's Brandon Gertz, uh, Alvarado Brown, don't know those two, and then, of course, your basic your basic prelims. There's actually three prelim fights, which is pretty crazy. So, yeah, going to be a wild day tomorrow. Very wild day tomorrow. Wait, hold up. Why, wait, why did they just say five matches, even though it's six fights? Homeboy just misspoke right there. Uh, let's see, Mighty Mouse's third fight would do 10K in the USD in Thailand goes a long way. That's true. 10K USA American dollars goes a long way in Thailand. You could live like a king out there for $10,000. Crazy enough. Let's see. I can retire in Thailand, be living beside the rich over there. Hell yeah, man. That's the way to do it. Especially since you could live, you know, we could live like kings out there. By the way, Sangranam. Wait. Sangragaram and Chapachit. Uh, the first fight, and it's at 113 pounds. That means these two guys are going to be moving at 100 miles an hour. 
Hopefully we can keep up. <laughs> These motherfuckers gonna be flying all over the place. Jay, who you got? Perry or Rockhold? I'm leaning Mike Perry because Rockhold should have done something like kickboxing or influencer boxing. I don't think he's built for bare knuckle. He is taller and longer. But I think if Perry gets on the inside, makes it a dirty, like, brawl, he's going to hit Luke enough times on the chin to where his face is going to get carved up, and eventually the towel will be thrown in, or he'll be knocked out cold. Uh, so I'm going Mike Perry. I think he can get a finish, too, on Rock Cold. I think, I think he can get a knockout. Or, actually, no, a TKO. I'll say a TKO. And by the way, Chad Pichit walking out first. Chapit Shit and Singer Gum are about to go about to throw down at 113 pounds. This should be fun. And apparently this is the rubber match between the two. Let me see if they have any sort of record here. Oh, they do. Look at that. So for Singer Gum, he lost to Petrambai. Uh, he did beat Suya by knockout. Those are his only two fights in one, so they had their fights outside. Of course, first fight in one Friday fights number one, other fight in one Friday fight number seven. And for, let's see, for Chad Pitch, let's see, anything on him? Nope, not a damn thing on him. That is a shame. But apparently these guys had fights, I believe, I believe this is the rubber match, but they have scrapped before in the past under an organization, so this is, uh, this is just two fighters on the circuit crossing paths, is kind of what this is being billed as. And now Sangrigam making his entrance out there. Little more of a banger, uh, than Chat walked out to, I'll just call him Chat. Sangra Gum is only 22 years old, by the way, but has 101 fights. God damn. Oh, this man got on sunglasses indoors and shit. This man got sunglasses indoors. <laughs> Who is that lady walking behind him? I mean, I assume that's a lady, but who who is that? This motherfucker walking out like he's a star, like he's Rod Tang or something. He's got on the... Uh, He's got on the Ray Charles sunglasses there. Man, walking out like he's a damn star. Even got the Rod Tang haircut. He gets a little swig of water from the coach. The coach is dressing kind of suave for a coach. He's dressed like he's about to go to a uh, about to go to a high end bar out there in Thailand. Let's see, high end triad member. <laughs> Gotta be. Okay, night of you have a great time. A great time. Hell yeah, man. Have a good night, Nas. I'll see you tomorrow, bro. I'll be live for Glory BKFC and the UFC tomorrow. It's gonna be a it's gonna be a long day but a fun day. Let's see. Ref checking them out. Lady our promoter, camp our big one. Oh oh that's our promoter. Okay, his promoter. Okay. Thank you, Fatra. I was about to say, he's got a big ass entourage. You're right, man. Apparently, he's coming from a big camp. Dude, this man's walking out like he's a real star. Jich, yeah, Jichimon Jung is one of the... Jichimon Dong is, I believe, one of the bigger camps out there. So, that makes sense. I believe Rod Tang might... I think, yeah, because Rod Tang has the same gym name, I believe. Could be wrong, but I think it is. I remember this guy is a savage. No, no doubt, man. Definitely a savage. Here we go. We now have the AI announcer. Who's first? Let's see. Kickboxing record for chat is 55 and 10 for chat. Wow. 55 and 10 for chat pitch it. Chat pitch it gets a big ovation out there. Let's start this clock up. One hundred one and thirty for Singer Gum. God damn. One hundred one and thirty. Shit. Mm. Here we go. That's a crazy record, by the way. One hundred thirty-one fights is one thirty-two for him, but his record is one hundred one and thirty. God damn. That is a lot of fucking fights to have. 
Same camp as Rod Tain, very powerful camp. She is the boss. That makes sense. Yeah, okay, so they are in the same camp. Okay, that makes sense. Here we go, round one. She definitely looks like a boss walking out there. A low kick out the gate. And a body kick out the gate for Chet. Chet with a 1, 2, 3, 4 for Chet. Actually, that was for Sengar Gom. My bad. For Sengar Gom, he got the 4 piece in. Chat with a low kick. Chat with a high kick. Good counter by Sengar Gom. Sengar Gom with a 3 piece. Sengar Gom walking down Chat to begin the fight. Good knee for Sengar Gom. Good knee for Chat. They break away. Good 1 2 for Chat. Good hook for Chat, but he missed. Barely missed. 1 2 now for Sengar Gom. Good jab for Chat. Singer Gom with a low kick. Singer Gom trying to fight his way out. Of the, well, actually, trying to fight his way in a cornering him. But Chat with a low kick initiates a clinch. Initiates some dominance. Oh shit! Singer Gom trying to shove him out of the ring there. Wow, got real close. Now they load up. Three piece now for Chapichit. One two for Singer Gom. One two again for Singer Gom. Singing out with a one two. Singing out with a low kick. Chat with an elbow. Singer Gom one two. Singer Gom one two and a low kick. Good right hand and a low kick by Singer Gom. But Chat catches the kick and almost dumps him around his fucking ass. Almost dumped him on the ass. Now they break away. 1.15 to go. Chap and Chip with a good jab. Chap and Chip with a 1-2. Good high kick. I get good elbow by Chad. Good elbow by Chad again. Second arm with a nice jab. Good hook by Second arm. Excellent hook. Tie up immediately. And now Sengar Nam just kind of bullying him in it. Ooh! And Chad with a fucking just straight up elbow. He said, get the fuck off of me. Broke up that clinch with a beautiful fucking elbow. One, two by Chat. Chat with a nice hook. Now one back up Sengar Nam a little bit. Good hook by Chat. By the way, somebody is playing a drum in the audience. I don't know who, but it's just like a... It's like a faint... Like somebody's just playing a fucking hand drum in the in the crowd there. I don't mind it, but I I notice it. It's very it's it's pretty loud. Good hook right there by Singer Gum. One two by Singer Gum. Good elbow by Chat. Good body shot by Singer Gum. Ten seconds ago, Chat wiping away his eye. Why did he get cut? One two by Singer Gum. And there's the end of the round. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. Oh, load up. There we go. Very close round. Might have to lean. Let's see. It's good hits by Singer Nam. Elbow by Chat. Gotta say, Chat actually looked pretty good in that first round, though. Especially with the elbow. But I want to make sure. Yeah, I want to make sure Singer and Om didn't get the better of him there too much. Singer and Om did land some good jabs. But uh, yeah, very close round. Might have to give it the chat, though, if we were going round by round. So I guess when championships are doing the dumb heartbeat sound when the guys are fighting, I thank God. <laughs> I guess so. Seemed like it. Here we go. Here we go. Good jab now by Chapachit. One, two by Singer Nam. Singer Nam with another one, two. Low kick by uh by Chapachit. High kick by Chapachit. Chat going low, went high with it. Good elbow by Singer Gom. Another elbow by Singer Gom. Elbow uppercut by Singer Gom. Good elbow by Singer Gom. Uppercut, a fucking elbow. One, two by Chat. Good elbow by Chat. Ah, another elbow by Sengar Gom almost landed flush. Ref gonna jump in there and separate him. Now they break away. 
Good one too by Chad. Good low kick by Singer Gom. Low kick by Singer. Uh, fucking Chad was caught by Singer Gom. Low kick by Chad. Second arm with a one two. Good elbow by Singer. By second arm. Second arm with a nice elbow again. Good elbow by second arm. Another elbow by second arm. Another elbow lands. Another elbow. Shit. Another elbow. Elbow by Chad. Elbow by second arm. Second arm with elbow. That one's blocked. He blocked that shit. One, two by second arm. He said, fuck the elbows. I got punches. There's another elbow by second arm. There's an elbow by Chad, though. Another elbow by Chad. Jesus. They're hitting each other with elbows. Everything they got. Both land elbows. God damn. Elbow by, uh, by second arm. And now an elbow by Chad. Good knee by Chad. Elbow by second arm. Jab by second arm. Low kick by Chad. Uppercutting a jab now by Chad. Second arm with a nice jab. Oh, shit, Chad landed on him. Oh, he's forced the second arm to fight off the ropes. Second arm just swinging for the fences to get off the ropes. Good elbow by Chad. One, two by second arm. One, two by Chad. Three, four by Chad. Five, six. Chad emptying out the fucking tank with punches. He's swarming him. He's swarming second arm. Second arm trying to fight back. Good knee. Good elbow by Chad. Right hand by Chad. He's haunting him. Elbow by Chad. Good elbow by both. Oh, shit. Elbow by Chad. Elbow by second arm. Elbow by Chad. This is crazy. Elbow by second arm. This is insane. Singing out to trying to get some distance away from this motherfucker. Chad started to just fucking walk him down now. Oh, this is crazy. Low kick now by Chat. Elbow and an overhand misses for Singer Gum. Low kick and a high kick by Chad. And now look at the fucking punches and the elbows and a straight elbow there by Chat. Flying Superman elbow to not land. And a good one too by Singer Gum. And there is the end of the round. Shit. Wow. Elbows forever. Saga got a rocket. He really does, bro. This is a crazy fucking round. Neither man wants to quit. I love it. I love how neither one wanted to quit. They were both just like, fuck it. Let's just throw elbows until somebody falls. They just kept pouring it on, too. That was the crazy part. They just kept fucking going with the elbows. Tough round to really, like, to give it to somebody because I was just so fucking close. Very fucking close. I wouldn't be surprised if that was just like a ten, like an even round right there. But still, damn, and they were both landing elbows on each other, both landing shit. Here they go. They got the fucking doctors looking at them and shit. There we go. Final round. Low kick for Chad. 1-2 for second arm. 1-2 for second arm. High kick by Chad. Low kick by Chad. A hook by Chad. Three piece by second arm. Elbow by second arm. In by Chad. Second arm with another elbow. Another elbow by Chad. Damn. They're matching each other on the elbows and the punches. Oh, good Chad by second arm. High kick by second arm. But a high kick by Chad. Lands flush. Elbow by Chad. Elbow by second arm. Fucking hook to the body by Chad. And a fucking hook to the face by second arm. Elbow now by second arm. Hook by second arm. Another hook by second arm and a back fist. One, two, three by second arm. Elbow by fucking, uh, by fucking Chad now. Jab by Chad. Second arm with a two, three piece. Shit. Overhand by second arm. Hook to the body, hook to the head by Sangin' Arm. 1-2 by Chat. Missed hook by Chat. 1-2 by Chat. 1-2-3 by Sangin' Arm. Sangin' Arm missed with a hook. Right left by Sangin' Arm. Good low kick there by Sangin' Arm. Shit. Good 1-2 again by Sangin' Arm. Oh, now they got the, the fucking ref had to get his damn knee in between them. Now they separate. Good hook there by uh, 
by Second Arm. One, two, three piece by Second Arm. And Chad is bleeding. Oh, his eye fried up bad. Chad's eyes fried. Oh, but he doesn't make Second Arm. Who almost gets knocked out with falls on the ropes. Now Chad going with everything. Go for elbows. Go for broke. Another elbow. Another elbow. Elbow by Chad. Chad, they breathe the fucking tank. And somehow Second Arm is still alive. Chad is bleeding out of his fucking eye. And Second Arm almost got knocked out. Somehow he is still fucking alive. I don't know how. 50 seconds to go. Oh, Chad with a jab. He can't see out of that eye, bro. That eye is fried. Chat's eye is fried up, but that shit don't even matter. He's just fighting like he has both eyes. Sangranam is a fucking warrior spirit. One, two for Sangranam. Jabs by Chat. Right hand by Chat that missed. Uppercut overhand by Chat. Good knee by Chat. And a fucking strike there by Sangranam. One, two by Sangranam. Back fist misses. One, two by Chat. Who's backing up Sangranam? Sangranam looks like he's about to fucking go to sleep. Oh, but a good elbow by Chad lands, and he's still alive. Nice return, elbow by Sangranam, who now is bleeding just like Chad is. Ten seconds to go, both men are leaking bad. Right hand by Chad, going to the body, going to the head, now just emptying out the tank with punches. They're both rock and rock and roll thoughts. Elbows by Chad, this punch by Sangranam, and there is the fight. God damn. Ooh. God damn, fight of the fucking, that might be fight of the night, it's insane, fuck, very close, brutal fight, gonna be hard for losing, Swan was kinda lost, I give it to chat, but uh, it anyway, it says Fatara, uh, uh, Fatara, oh man, what a, what a fight indeed, man, very close, chat might get it, Cause he did almost knock down uh, Sangranam right there, but Sangranam fucking he dug down deep and fought back. He was carving that man up too. Those elbows destroyed. Yeah, his, fucking Chat's eye looks destroyed. Oh, the uppercut, the right hand. Holy shit! Dana White has to be scratching his head. Should have invested in Muay Thai instead of the slab fight. I'll tell you that. The, the fucking Muay Thai is is top tier striking. Holy hell! Let's see, judges scorecards. Let's see what the judges rule it. All three judges. In favor of the winner by unanimous decision. Which is crazy. Should have been split, maybe. Ah, they did give it to Chat. They gave it to Chat Pachit. His eye is fried up, though, even though he got the win. What a fight. Both deserve bonuses anyway. I agree. I would consider giving both a bonus because both of them bled pretty bad. And both of them went for broke. They're, they they fought like their lives were on the line. That one's going to go to ch the, uh, chat. Chat, but shit's going to get the win there. But still, an amazing battle. Nothing is better than this. Well, I don't know about anything, but there's there there's a lot of combat sports out there that doesn't top this. There's a lot in combat sports that doesn't top this. This is crazy. Every fight has pretty much been fight of the night. Not Well, not every fight. The MMA fight wasn't. But still, we've had fight of the night contenders for at least the majority of the card here. 120% Jay should have went to business with Chaudhry. Shit. They definitely should have bought... They should have bought some form of Muay Thai. If not Chaudhry, they should have looked at like RWS or some shit like that. Because any form of Muay Thai is truly the shit. It's it's pretty much blood sport. It's high level striking blood sport right here. I, it doesn't get any better than this. Cheers, by the way, everybody, to that fight. Chatri gave that man a bonus too. I would give a bonus to both, actually. <laughs> Excuse me. I actually would give a bonus to both. I would consider it anyway. You definitely got to give one to uh, to chat. But I would consider one to Sangrangam. Just because uh, he made that man bleed pretty bad. What he did to his eye was pretty crazy. Could have got a piece of 1FC. I would try to say in the States. Definitely. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, they didn't give him a bonus. Let's go. Spoke too soon. They gave it to him. He got it. Both men got it. So chat gets a bonus. And Sangrangam gets a bonus.
There we go. Well deserved for both. And that was a trilogy fight between the two folks. That was the third time they've ever fought. First time in one championship, but the third time they fought overall. Won't be surprised if they fight again. Holy hell. Holy hell. I would book a fucking fourth fight. Just because they're both going to fight like that, I'd, bu I'd book another one. That is amazing. A lot of fucking action in this fight. Really, that's what you want to see. You want high-level action fighters that are going to put it all on the line. And Muay Thai's got it. One lumpany somehow has it. I don't know what it is, but one lumpany has got it. They've got it. And folks, another catchweight fight. Noom Surin going on Yazila. Not Godzilla, but Yazila. <laughs> Not Godzilla, but Yazila. And Noom Surin. Thailand versus Thailand violence. Thai versus Thai violence. Really, that's all this main card's been so far. I love it. They gotta give both guys a bonus. Bro, that, oh. I, I love that one championship does it. Because sometimes we'll see fights like that where both guys give it their all. And it's almost as if not giving them a bonus is like criminal shit. So I love that one championship will reward a losing fighter if they put it on the line. Like if they lose a close fight. I like that they still reward them with a bonus, you know what I mean? That way they got a little something to fall back on, and they can go back to the gym, get their mind right, and win the next battle. So I love it. I, I'm right there with you, brother. I love it. It's the right way to go about handling uh, a fighter, especially in this type of blood sport. You got to handle them right, and that's the right way to do it. And now we have Yadzilla. Not Godzilla, but Yadzilla. Now walking out to the ring. Oh, he got the traditional tassels on and shit. He really ready to do some uh, do, do some damage in there. We had Irish, Iran versus Thailand. Violence and prelims. Absolutely, man. A lot of major violence in the prelims. And it's about to hit another fucking level. Which is going to be absolutely insane. I'm serene being looked at right now. Good to see. You. Amen, Jay. Absolutely. Let's see. Great. They deserve a tough life. They deserve it after a tough life as a fighter. I agree. They absolutely deserve it. When you live that type of life as a Muay Thai fighter and you're getting into scraps like that damn near every month, you gotta you gotta have something to live off of. Yeah, amen, Jay God, absolutely. Noom Surin now walks out to the ring. This is gonna be another banger. This is at 118 as well. So the last fight was 113 pounds. This one's 118, so once again, more more quick action. I expect these guys to be fast and furious, just like the just like the fucking movie franchise. Except it won't be corny. It'll be full legit violence, in the best way possible. Can't beat it. Let's see, Ant. You're absolutely correct. He definitely is, man. When when these guys are fighting as frequently as they are, with over like well over a hundred, two hundred, three hundred fights. That, that is hard. That is a difficult grind, especially in a sport like Muay Thai. They, they deserve all the money in the fucking world. MMA fighters deserve their share. Other fighters in combat sports deserve their share. But when we see full-on Mortal Kombat fatality shit like this, yeah, you got you to gotta give these motherfuckers something to stay alive because the fact that a lot of these dudes have over two, 300 Muay Thai fights is just a fucking mystery to me. I don't know how you can do it. Especially fighting at this type of high level, I don't know how it's possible. But these mo that hey, that that's what separates them from us. I can tell you that. That separates you from. It separates warriors from the average motherfucker. You know, they got my respect. Hell yeah, bro, they got mine for life. Even as a guy like me that used to do karate and kickboxing growing up, this shit is next fucking level. <laughs> 
This is this is some next level shit, man. This is up there with bare knuckle under things that I under combat sports that I know I would never do. There's some combat sports I'll do, but Muay Thai, nah, fam. <laughs> that, that 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 you you got to be built. You got to be built for that shit, man. That and bare knuckle, you got to be built for that. Cheers, everybody. Godzilla introduced first, and now who's second? What's this man's record? 119, Jesus Christ. This is fight 120 for this dude. Yeah, that's next level shit right there. Uh, do you think how should get... Uh, who do you think should get a shot at Haggerty? For me, rematch with former champ. I like the rematch idea. Um, yeah, I like the rematch idea. Because looking at the rest of his weight class, I remember looking at it uh, recently. Not too many people in there can hang with him. Maybe Liam Harrison. But I think Liam Harrison would die either way. But I, I agree. I think maybe run it back with Nango. Especially after Nango was on that long streak. Go ahead and run it back. Because be it, it's a major fight now. It's a major fight. Nongo has to now try to get this belt back. So I agree. Run it back. Oh, good high kick for y'all. For I'm sorry. Oh, that's a low blow. And the only reason I say run it back is because his division is kind of shallow. So yeah. Time out. Is he all right? What are you doing, ref? Oh, time out. Time out. Nongo got kicked in the dick. No, I'm sorry, I kicked in the dick. And the ref looked confused. I couldn't tell if he was going to uh, give him a timeout or what. By the way, that faint drum that sounds like somebody's heart beating is still in that background. Oh, god damn. Yeah, he kicked him right in that fuck. Oh, he caught him flush on the balls. Low kick for Yazilla. Jab for Yazilla. No, I'm sorry, with the right hand. Who went to by Yazilla? Yazilla with a nice one, too. Yeah, Attila with a hook that misses. Three piece by Nam in response. Good jab by Nam Good high kick by Yadzilla. High kick by Nam Good jab by Yadzilla. Now they're right back in the center. Good high kick by Yadzilla. One, two for Yadzilla. Jab by Yadzilla. Low kick for Yadzilla. Strike by Yadzilla. Just straight, straight jab. Right after the low kick. He's trying to hunt down Nam Sarin right now. Good jab by Yadzilla. Good hook by Yadzilla. Yadzilla with a good hook and a jab. Yadzilla with a nice jab. Stalking Nam Sarin now. Low kick by Yadzilla. Nam Sarin with a nice one, two to fire back. Yeah, I'm see. Nam Sarin trying to hunt down Yadzilla. Yadzilla with a nice jab. Keeping that stance long and strong. Good one, two there for Yadzilla. Low kick by Nam Sarin. One, two by Yadzilla after eating the low kick. And now we try to corner Nam Sarin here. Good jab again by Yadzilla after catching the kick. Trying to keep him cornered. Good kick, a good elbow. Yadzilla land a flush on him. Good catch of a kick by Yadzilla and a jab. Numsa, actually, no, Yadzilla with a low kick. Numsarim with a response low kick. A counter low kick. Just responding, matching his kicks. Good kick to the body by Numsarim, but it was caught by Yadzilla. One, two, three by Numsarim. Numsarim gets caught by the jab. Now he's trying to get the crowd into it. It is Numsarim to let people know he's not hurt, even though he is. Low kick by Numsarim. Yadzilla got him right up against the ropes. One, two for Yadzilla. Good clinch knee by Yadzilla. Ten seconds to go. Yazila with a good kick to the body. And there's the end of the round. Good shit. Can't beat that. Let's see. Yazila got a good Kong gear on. 
It's the Iron Sheik, no doubt about it. Good shit right there. Let's see, little fucking cheetah can't hang with a gorilla voodoo run for my magic. Hell yeah, gotta love them lyrics. Let's see. By the way, that round I would have to maybe give to Yadzilla there. Just slight nod to him if we were going to score it round by round. Even though, Yad, even though I'm going to be honest with you, nobody's dominating this shit. These guys are just back and forth, back and forth. I love the action. Yadzilla was a beautiful fucking punch that landed on Num Serene. He's hit Num Serene with some good strikes in this one, though. Num Serene is, uh, is, is pretty strong, though. Fires back and doesn't really stand down. Eager to fire back at all costs. Here we go, round two. There we go. Good eye kick by... Oh, shit. Num Serene getting scrappy with him now. Getting real scrappy with him. Oh! Dick. Kick to the dick there by Num Serene. Oh, but Yadzilla's gonna just fight on. He got hit square in the dick, though. That was a full-on kick to the balls, but he's gonna take it like a man. Good high kick, good high kick, good elbows, good uppercuts now by Namsudin. Good knee by Namsudin. Good elbow by Namsudin. Full one-two by Namsudin. Namsudin now trying to walk down Yadzilla. Go over the high kick is Namsudin, but he just missed. Standing there with Yadzilla. Got a high kick by Yadzilla. High kick by Namsudin. High kick by Namsudin. Right to the body. Good knee to the body by Namsudin. Namsudin and uh, Yadzilla break away. Namsudin with a low kick. One, two for Namsudin. Hook to the body, hook to the head. High kick by Yadzilla off the back foot. Namsudin charge a forward with a 1-2, initiating a violent clinch against the ropes. Both men landing knees on each other. The referee jumping in there to separate them. Lynch, oh shit, 1-2 now for Namsudin. Good counter by Yadzilla. Let me set my phone up actually right here. That'd be better for me. That way I don't look like I'm looking off camera. Good uppercuts for Namsudin. Nice clinch for Namsudin. And there's a jab right there by Namsareen. Oh, damn. And Namsareen went for an overhand there, but Yadzilla able to get out of the fucking way. Good one, two by Yadzilla. Namsareen with a good uppercut. Now a good knee for Namsareen. Ref saying break. Ref saying get the fuck off each other. Ref says fight. One, two for Yadzilla. Namsareen with a nice leaping, leaping, look like a leaping roundhouse maybe. Nice attempt there, if anything. And then they tie up after the, the kick didn't even land. Namsarin going straight to the body with a hook. And now a violent clinch against the ropes. Good knee for Namsarin. They switch positions in it. Now they're going to break away. Down to 30 seconds. Good uppercut for Yadzilla. Good cross by Yadzilla. Good knee for Namsarin up against the ropes. The ref had to get his fucking knee in there. Get his leg in between the two to pry him apart. Good uppercuts for Nam Serene, though, to the body and the head. And he fucking backed up Yadzilla there. And now he's just tying him up against the ropes to throw some strikes. Ref getting in there to pull these motherfuckers apart. Good one, two for Nam Serene. Ref needs to show some damn distance here. And Nam Serene just dumps Yadzilla to the floor. And there's the end of the round. <laughs> Tough, man. Tough one right here. Crowd seem to love a, love both, but a, but a but a tough round right here. Tough round, a little bit score. Might have to maybe lean uh Yaz maybe Nasreen just for the uh, just for the aggressiveness. Like I want to award the aggressive behavior. Yadzilla has had his moments in here, but it feels like Nasreen has mainly been the aggressor for that round. He also dumped Yadzilla on his back. There was a body shot by Num Serene. Yeah, he was just charging him, pushing him against the ropes, trying to bully the man, throw him to the ground a couple times. Very aggressive round right there. I could see it being one to one, depending on if you had Num Serene in the first round. I had it Yadzilla in the first one, so I think one to one right now. But right now, momentum in the favor of Num Serene. Let's see what he can do in round three along with Yadzilla. Both come out the gate with low kicks. Good knees in the clinch by both. 
Ref getting in there, getting a whole fucking knee in that bitch. Good one, two, three now for Num Serene. High kick for Num Serene. Look at Yadzilla now. Num Serene just, he's lighting that boy up. He's lighting that motherfucker up. Good knee for Yadzilla. And for Num Serene. Good hook by Num Serene. Good knee by Num Serene. And for Yadzilla. Ref breaking him apart. Hook for Yadzilla not there. Three beats for Num Serene is. Nasreen is latrine with the damn hits. And Nasreen just dumps into the damn floor after they do a little spin. He said, get the fuck off me, bitch. Get down on the floor. And now Yadzilla right back up getting tagged up by Nasreen. Nasreen landing some uppercuts on his ass. Uppercuts of the body into the head. He's swinging right at him. Yadzilla getting, he, he getting bullied a little bit here. Yadzilla tying up with him. Yadzilla getting bullied by Nasreen. Nasreen with a 1-2. He backing up Yadzilla. Good hook, good cross. Excellent jab. One, two by Namsarine. Another one by Namsarine. It was two Latrine with these fucking punches, man. Latrine and Pristine with the damn punches and the strikes. Uppercut, uppercut again. Good knee by Namsarine. Hey, Yadzilla's credit. He's eating all this shit and he's still alive, but he's getting his ass whooped right now. This is all Namsarine. Going to the body now is Namsarine. Namsarine holding on tight. Ref gonna break away. High kick by Namsarin. Knees by Namsarin. Another knee. Another knee. Ref getting his knee in there to break these two motherfuckers apart. One, two by Yazila. Look at Namsarin with the jab to the body, the uppercut to the head. Backing this man up all four corners of the ring. Step in knee for Namsarin. Ref getting his knee in there to break them apart. Now we're down under a minute in this third and final round. Good hook there by Namsarine. Back it up. Yadzilla to the other corner of the ring now. Another hook. Now a clinch knee. Ref getting his knee up to break him out of that corner. This has been all Namsarine. He's pushing this man all around the ring. All four corners getting touched, it looked like. Just about. Just about. 30 seconds ago. Namsarine right back on the hunt. Good elbow by Yadzilla off the back foot. Namsarine with a good knee to the body. Another knee to the body as they lean up against the ropes. Ref going to get his fucking leg up in there and separate him. 15 seconds to go. Good hunting by Namsarine. Now a knee to the body. Another knee to the body. Ref getting in there 10 seconds to go. Good knee to the body again. 1-2 by Yadzilla. One, two by Namsarine, two Latrine and Pristine with them strikes, and there is the end of the fight. Namsarine won that shit. Two Pristine with them damn strikes, man. And two clean. In the end, he dominated there. He, he deserved that. He earned that. Good fight by both, though. Good fight by both. I can't I can't be mad at that. I think Nasreen has done enough. I believe he's done enough to earn a win here. Should, anyway. Should should get a win here. Good shit. And let's see what we got left. After this fight, we have only four left. Up next is Seifan versus Yarkamparak. All three judges give it. Gotta be Namsarin. Gotta be. Yes, sir. Namsarin. Two pristine, the train, and clean with that win. And he's fired up, man. Fired up after that. Much deserved, of course. Good shit right there. Everybody having a good time in the animal room on a Friday morning. Hope everybody's enjoying themselves. We still got so much more action left, everybody. We're only getting started here with the fun today. Only getting started with the fun today. You know the vibes. And now we go to Seifon versus Yad Kamparak. I believe it's how I say Yad Kamparak. At 147. Another catch week. God damn. Only in Muay Thai, you're going to see some catchweights like that, brother. Wow. Hold on, let me get this back up. Oh, shit. Actually, wait, let's check. Any info on these two? 
Nope. No record. Anything here? Nope. Not a damn thing. Alright. Well, fuck it. We just gonna dive right in and we gonna find out who's better. Then the decision went for Noom Sarin and up next is Sephon in your Kompatak. Or your Kompatak, I think is how they pronounce it. Hold on, let me put that back up straight. Let's see, Jay. Uh, what time you start tomorrow? I start 2 p.m. tomorrow. Glory is the first event we're doing. Uh, 2 p.m. Uh, Eastern Time. West Coast probably going to be way earlier than that. You guys are like three hours behind, so probably like 11 or something. But I'll be starting with Glory. And then after Glory, we're getting right into the UFC. And then after the UFC, we're getting into BKFC later on in the night. And I'm going to be doing this all on one stream, by the way. All on one stream. So we're going in that order. Glory first, UFC second, BKFC last. But we're all going to start 2 p.m. Eastern time. I'm going to be an early one. I might be off for like 10, on for like 10 hours. By the way, welcome back, Pullman. Pullman got two on it. I appreciate it, my dude. And Meridian Heights, have a good day at work, my brother. Got to head all to work. Look, I can watch anything on my computer. No audio. See you tomorrow. Hell yeah, my dude. I'll see you tomorrow, my brother. We got a triple header. Of course, we got Glory. UFC, which starts really by the time Glory's main card starts. Because Glory cards are always short. By the time that card ends, UFC will just be beginning. And by the time the UFC is over with, BKFC will just be getting into the thick of things at 8 p.m. So I will see you all tomorrow, of course, for that if you're heading off now. Uh, we're going to wrap up the rest of this card. And uh, let's see. We have exactly, yep, four fights left on this bad boy. This should be a good one right here. Let's see, 2 p.m. says Grana. Oh, yeah, so I think for Ann out on the West Coast, that might be like 11 a.m. Might be, because I know it's a few hours behind me. So, yeah, I think like 11 a.m. for you. I do have the link up, by the way. I should I should tell you guys that I do have the link up. Hold on, I got you. Go ahead and leave your like over there. So, hold on. I got you guys. Here we go. Ink for tomorrow's show. Boom. So let me hold on. Let me get that right there. There we go. So yeah, that that'll be tomorrow, everybody. Click that link right there. Leave your like. Uh, and I will see you, of course, there. 5.30 p.m. over here, says Paul Oh, shit. Shout out to you, my brother. It is 11.30 a.m. over here, so it's it's early. Bright and early for me. Yeah, 11 a.m. says Ann. Oh, yeah, so it'll be early. It'll be an early one. Cheers to you, by the way, Pullman, out there right now. 5.30 p.m. Oh, wow, so it'll be 5.30? Oh, shit. It's funny, for me, yeah, that's going to be, yeah, I was about to say, that's going to be an early one for me. Uh, on Saturday, but it'll be a good day at least. It'll be a long day, but a good day. And by the way, hold on. Hold on, let me check something real quick. Let's see, Friday fight, shoot to Brazil. Oh. By the way, everybody in my Discord, everybody check the Discord, because yours truly just left something in there for you that's going to help you out with watching Glory with me tomorrow. So if you're in my Discord, go ahead and check this out. Let's see. Let's see. For... By the way, Yoran Kamparak is now being introduced first. So there we go. And let's see, what is Safon's or Sanfon's record, I should say? 55 and 10. My bad, 2.30 p.m. East Coast time, 1131. Oh, yeah. 1131 here for me right now. Tomorrow it'll be 2 p.m. Eastern time. Here we go, folks. Round number one. Here 
go, folks. Round one. Boom. This is at 147, too. So these guys are uh, obviously not the... They're not, you know, the huge, biggest guys in the world. But in terms of Muay Thai and action, yeah, they're probably some of the heavier weights we, we will see in one. I don't think we've seen heavyweight Muay Thai yet in one championship, but I could be wrong. Good punch and a low kick there by Yada Kambatic. Yeah, it's going to be a good day, Sam William. Absolutely, brother. I like when we get all three rule sets in a day. We get MMA, we get some kickboxing, then we get some bare knuckle to wrap up the night. Bare knuckle is going to be my favorite, though. I love me some glory, folks, but this is my event of the night. I mean, Perry, Rockhold, Mendez, Alvarez, uh, Farron and Rawlings will be a banger. Even Ben Rothwell on the card. I mean, that's going to be, oh, that's just fire written all over it. That's that that's certified fire right there. Don't get any better than that. In terms of bare knuckle, that's, oh, that's a high-level card. Good high kick, by the way, by a set of phone. You got a compadic now. Ties up with him. Throws some knees. Safe on with a nice knee. Safe on with a knee. Safe on with a knee. Yo, compadre with a knee. Yo, compadre with a knee. And now they bring away. That clinch was a little drawn out, but it's all good. Damn, high kick by Safe on. Good high kick by Yo, compadre. Safe on with a good knee. They're throwing some heavy strikes, man. They're, they're not throwing the fast shit, but they're throwing the heavy shit, which I like because at least they're trying to kill each other. That I can appreciate about some of the heavier. Weights in Muay Thai fight. Well, when it comes to uh, Muay Thai fights featuring weight classes that aren't like bantam weight and and lower. Now they get in there because usually bantam weight's like the highest. Like usually when you get past bantam weight, a lot of the fighters throw more power shots in the beginning of their Thai fights. Good one too, right there by Sanfon. Sanfon. Good elbow by Sanfon. You have like Tawanchi, who's like the exception of the rule though at forty five, but like the rest of them, it's kind of like the same shit. He's, Tawanchi's probably like the only featherweight champ. Well, the only featherweight in one who, uh, who's got the speed and the power. There's a good one-two by Joachim Barak. Good knee by Sam Vaughn. Another knee by Sam Vaughn. Another knee. Now they're going right along the rope. Sam Vaughn with another knee. And now they're pushing each other in the corner. Ref gonna break them apart. Good push kick by Joachim Barak. Now a knee. Now we'll go to elbow by Yoko Paddock. Good jab by Yoko Paddock. Step up knee. Push knee for Yoko Paddock. Now Saifon trying to push him in the corner. Good knee. Good elbow. Ten seconds to go. It says their best BKFC card yet. I believe it. Might be better than Knuckle Mania, which is crazy to say. Because usually those are their best. And there is the end of the round. Round one in the books. Not a bad opening round. My after the lean, Safon for uh, aggressiveness, I would have to say. Just slightly lean. But not not the best. Not not the most entertaining first round between the two. Yoakam Paddock, to his credit, tried to make it a little more exciting where Safon executed a lot more clinching uh, than the other guy did. Let's see. Safon, the most boring kind of Muay Thai fighter, clinch king guy. Yeah, I did notice that. You're absolutely right. Uh, Fatari, he he clinched a lot in that round. He was able to maintain the control, but he was very clinch heavy in that first round. I I was not a fan of that. <laughs> Yo, Kampadik, to his credit, tried to make it a little more of a stand up fight than a, than a clinch fight. It'll be interesting to see what Yo Kampadik can do in round two because I think Safon just tried to, even though he was a little more aggressive, uh, he tried to be a lot more controlling with the clinches there in round one. I think he might have done enough to steal it, but we'll see. We'll see if he can keep up this pressure. Good high kick by Safon. Now kick to the body by Yo Kampadik. Once again, another clinch. Clinch up immediately. Good elbow for Safon. Good knee for Safon. Now he's using his head, and now a knee for Saifon. Knee for Yoko Paddock. And Yoko Paddock's like, fuck this clinch. Push kick now for Yoko Paddock. High kick for Saifon. Elbow. Now an elbow for Yoko Paddock. Oh, now another elbow. Shit, good elbow for Saifon. Knee for Saifon. Now they're just leaning up against the ropes. Now the ref's going to separate him. 
Once it got boring, the ref just separated him. Good push kick for Yoakam Badak. Good kick to the body for Yoakam Badak. But once again, Sam Fung with another, uh, with another clinch. Sam Fung trying to go for an elbow right there. Almost fucking decapitated him with it. Now we need the body. Now we need the body for Sam Fung as he just pushes him over in the corner with this damn clinch. Another knee and he drops him! He just dropped Yoakam Badak with a beautiful knee strike with that damn clinch. Jesus. Five, six, seven, eight. Standing eight. Those clinch strikes were getting more and more aggressive. Now look at him getting back in there with another clinch. Now they're starting to land in flush. Another knee lands. Fuck. He dropped him with that damn knee to the body. Yoakam Badek with a high kick. Now Yoakam Badek is the one tying up. He didn't like that knee to the body, man. He didn't like that clinch knee. That's what I want to see. You're going to clinch up like that. You better drop people. Good elbow by Sefan. Good knee to the body by Sefan. Another knee to the body. If he lands it, maybe you can drop him again with another one. I right, separate. Sefan is now in the lead after that high kick and a punch. Another another knee. Another clinch knee. That one was soft. That elbow was not. He didn't burn it with the elbow. Yo, Kapana, get down after the elbow. Jesus Christ. He fell face first. How was he back up? Oh, this ain't gonna last long. Sefon's gonna kill this man. Push kick to the face. Yoko Badek throws him off. Push kick to the face. How did Yoko Badek eat that? How did he eat it? What the fuck? How did he eat that shit? And somehow he's still alive. 25 seconds ago. Yoko Badek with a good push kick. Oh, good knee to the body by fucking Sefon. Elbow. Cross. Look at the crosses. Yoko Badek now firing back. And Sefon was hurt. He was over for a second, now it's 10 seconds to go! Holy shit. Push kick! Now the cracked heads, what the fuck? How is Yoda Kambadik still alive? What the fuck? Wow. What the fuck? Oh, uh, Super Hydro, while well, nasty, Shiznat still alive? I don't know how the fuck he's alive, my goodness. Let's see, come back, axe kick, okay, back. oh, okay, welcome back, uh, axe kick, that was a beautiful axe kick, damn, there was the knee that dropped him, that nasty knee strike just fucking dropped his ass, fool, and there's the elbow that sent him crashing to the floor, fuck, <laughs> fucking nearly murdered him with that damn elbow, fuck, absolutely nasty. Let's see what they're going to do now. That was a damn good round right there. Here we go. Round three. Oh, good elbow. Good elbow over Seifan. Good elbow over Seifan. Patanik with a good elbow. Good knee now for Seifan. Good knee for Seifan. Good knee for uh, Joachim Barak. Good cross. Good knee. Cross and a high kick. Oh, good one too for Seifan. Knee for Seifan. Knee for Joachim Barak. Knee for Seifan. Knee for Joachim Barak again. They're right up against the ropes. Ref going to separate him. Oh, good high kick. Good high kick for Joachim Barak. Good job for Joachim Barak. But look at Seifan. Seifan is just trying to walk this man down, holding the back of his head. Good knee. Now an elbow for Seifan. Now another elbow for Seifan. The other elbow for Seifan. This is fucking crazy, man. Good elbow. Good elbow again. Good elbow! Oh my god, what an elbow battle. Shit scrapping. What's up, Mellow Jojo? Good to see you, bro. This is still on YouTube. Good elbow. Another elbow. They're just trading elbows. It's an elbow battle. Oh! Seifan and your pack just trading them. Damn. Elbow for Seifan. Another elbow for Seifan. How is Unifax still alive? Rock'em Sock'em Robots with elbows. Regular at 12-6. Another elbow, knee for Zephon, elbow for Yodopak, Jesus Christ, they're fighting against the ropes, just elbow for elbow, 
They are carving each other. And now Saifon with a knee. Tiger knee gonna back up Yoda Fight. He's trying to walk him down. Now another tiger knee. Another elbow. Saifon with a kick to the body. Push kick to the body. Doesn't land, but a good jab for Yoda Fight is there. Yoda Fight goes for an elbow. Oh my god. They're just testing each other. They're fucking chin checking each other. This is crazy. Another elbow for Saifon. Drags Yoda Fett over to the other side of the ring. And leans him against the ropes. Goes for a back fist that misses though. Now Yoda Fight, oh shit, Yoda Fight eats elbow, eats a knee to the body, now another elbow for Saifon on Yoda Fett. another elbow, another elbow for Saifon, knee for Saifon, elbow for Saifon, another elbow, fuck, push kick to the body, elbow to the body for Yoda Fuck. Yoda Fett, oh shit, eats another elbow for Saifon, shit, another elbow, another elbow, this is fucking crazy, damn, another one, another one, Yo, these guys are just, they're not giving up. Another elbow for Saifon. Elbow for Yoda Fight. Elbow for Saifon. What the fuck are these guys on? Step and knee. Now a step and knee again. Oh, good elbow. Good elbow. Ah, elbow behind the guard. Kick to the body. Overhand right for Saifon and Yoda Fight. Ten seconds to go. Saifon with a high kick. Push kick to the face for Saifon and Yoda Fight. Talk somehow. Ain't it. Another elbow for Saifon, and it, what the fuck? End to another beautiful fight. Damn. Just trading elbow for elbow, and nobody wanted to fucking fold. Jesus. Oh. All three rounds there. These guys fucking, they fucked each other up. No cuts, surprisingly. No cuts, no blood. These guys are made of metal. Let's see, great round, but who you got? Probably going to be a safe on battle, if I had to guess. Probably going to be him by decision, but very close. Saffon will likely win because of the aggression, but it's going to be very close, because these guys were matching each other. Muay Thai fighters are leather for skin. Real talk, bro. I don't know how these motherfuckers are not bleeding. After three rounds, let's see. All three judges. The winner by unanimous decision. Saffon! They give it to Saffon by unanimous decision. Would have said probably split, but I'll take a unanimous. That's the right call. Damn. Between them, they count over 150 elbows, says Aunt William. That's crazy. Between those two, 150, I believe it too. I believe it, but that that's just wild that these two can land that many elbows on each other and not be hurt. I'm telling you, these guys are something else, man. These motherfuckers are something else. Kung Chai and now Xavier Gonzalez. We only have three fights left, ladies and gentlemen. After this is, these are our top three. We have Kung Chai up next with Xavier Gonzalez, Hun Selec and Coco in the co-main event, and then of course Jin Selec and Chorfa in the main event. So we're getting pretty close. Only three of these bad boys left. I have a feeling it won't be, uh, it won't take too long. And by the way, sh finally a proper weight class, straw weight. So many, uh, so many fucking catchweights on this card. <laughs> Let's see, Fathar was right, absolutely. Bonus, give them bots. They deserve bonus. I agree, man. They should have gotten bonuses. I hope they get one under a table since they didn't announce it. They deserve bonuses for that. Both of them do. Both of them put up a damn good fight. Not even mad at it. Everybody having fun in the animal room right now. Absolutely loving it in the animal room right now. Hey, grab yourself a girl. Have a good time. You know the vibes, my people. And Pullman, there's the, there's the redhead in the purple dress for you there, brother. Get some alcohol, get you a lady. It's going to be a fun weekend, everybody. And remember, we the, the fun's only beginning around here. We still got Similar and Grown Heart and a heavyweight tournament. A whole one-night heavyweight tournament featuring four fucking monsters in glory. We have a mid-UFC card Apex special uh, before we get to our UFC 288 extravaganza next week. And then, of course, speaking of extravaganza, the bare-knuckle card of the year. Mike Perry, Luke Rockhold, Chad Mendez, Eddie Alvarez, Farah and Beck, Betch Rawlings. And of course, 
Gary Copeland, or Josh Copeland, I believe, and Ben Rothwell, big Ben Rothwell, who got a knockout win in his debut. Oh, it's going to be so much fun this weekend. We're just getting started with the fun, my people. By the way, somebody walking out to a banger. That is Xavier Gonzalez walking out to a banger. You picked a good one. Can't hate that. Let's see what we got here. Let's put this over here. And now we have Kung Chai about to enter. No, I'm sorry. Uh, Xavier Gonzalez about to enter the ring. Bowing to everybody. <clears throat> Last four fights are insane. Oh, yeah. We got co-main main event after this. It's going to be pretty damn good over on one for BKFC. Oh, yeah. Top four fights in BKFC, bro. Those are going to be fights of the year in BKFC. Uh, of course, Ben Rothwell, Beck Rawlings, and Farah. Fucking Alvarez and Mendez. And, of course, Perry Rockhold. Though, though, that's just pure fire for BKFC. I can't wait. And now we have Kung Chai walking out to the ring. Kung Chai looks like he's ready to go. Ready to rock and roll. Cheers, my people. And now Kung Chai being checked out. Never seen him wear those pink shorts before. Even though I know that gym of his... Actually, he might have worn them before. It might have been a different style, maybe. But I don't remember those colored shorts on him. They might be new. Nonetheless, though, this is going to be fun. Cheers. Hell yeah. Cheers to you, brother. By the way, uh, next catchway fights, not till the main event. Adam Waite and Straw Waite. Only two fighters on the main card. Only two, only four fighters uh, bothered to actually weigh in properly. That's funny. I love you, Muay Thai, but that is hilarious to say. Here we go, folks. Now we have the AI announcer in the sky. Xavier Gonzalez is 18-7. and Alright, modest. Modest. For a foreigner. From Spain, representing Spain. We haven't seen any Spaniards make their way to Lumpany Stadium until now. And now we have Kung Chai, who we have seen before. And by the way... Oh no, that's Hunsulik. Kung Chai. Do they have his record? Let's see. They do. This is Kung Chai's record. He's already fought at two Lumpany Stadium events for one. Debuted at the third one. Knocked out... Uh, Crit Pitch with a knockout in round one. And then Chelum Cow, he beat by decision in number seven back in March. So he has already had two one Friday fight appearances. This is his third one. Let's see if he can make it three in a row at Lumpany, folks. Here we go. Round one. House favorite Kung Chai against the foreigner, the Spaniard, and Xavier Gonzalez. Gonzalez with a nice hook. Nice high kick by Kung Chai. One, two by Kung Chai. Hook by Gonzalez misses. Low kick by Gonzalez is there. Push kick by Gonzalez. Good jab by Kung Chai. High kick by Kung Chai, but a good counter by Gonzalez. Good low kicks for Gonzalez. Good jab by Kung Chai. High kick by Kung Chai. Low kick by Gonzalez. One, two by Gonzalez, but a counter by uh, Kung Chai. Low kick for Gonzalez. Push kicking Kung Chai back. Good little cross there by uh, by Gonzalez. And then a leaping hook. Good low kick for Kung Chai, though. Good elbow by Gonzalez, but Kung Chai able to counter it with a jab. High kick for Kung Chai. Push kick. Low push kicks for Gonzalez. 1 2 for Kung Chai. 
Just heavy heat, man. My goodness, these two are not fucking around. Oh, damn, now a straight jab by Gonzalez and a fucking hook to the body by Gonzalez. Another hook to the body by Gonzalez. And now some counters by Kung Chai. Step in, Tiger Knee by Kung Chai. Good step in, elbow by Gonzalez. Gonzalez pouring on the pressure a little bit. Oh, good straight jab by Gonzalez. Yeah, Kung Chai standing there stiff for a second. Good counter now by Kung Chai. Good one two by Kung Chai. Stepping elbow by Gonzalez. The counter is right there. Good high kick there by Kung Chai. And a fucking hook cross by Kung Chai. High kick and a jab by Kung Chai. Push kick by Gonzalez. Hook and a jab by Gonzalez. Lands right on Kung Chai. Hook to the body now for Gonzalez. High kick for Kung Chai. And he makes fucking Gonzalez tip over a little bit. One two three for Kung Chai. Elbow for Kung Chai. Oh shit. Oh, he's landing on him. Jab for Kung Chai. Hook for Kung Chai. High kick for Kung Chai. And somehow Gonzalez handled it well. Gonzalez with a 1-2. Good jab by Kung Chai. Able to fucking counter him as he ran in. Good jab by Kung Chai. High kick by Kung Chai. 1-2 by for Kung Chai. Right to the head. Gonzalez firing back. Gonzalez with a nice push kick to the body. Just going with the teeps now to the body is Gonzalez with a good kick to the body for Kung Chai. One, two, three for Gonzalez and a high kick is there. Oh, fucking Kung Chai met him with a beautiful elbow. Now a kick to the head for Oh, shit, for Kung Chai, but Gonzalez got a rock. He got him landing and rocking. Kung Chai is a zombie. That boy landing and rocking. Straight jab for Gonzalez. He got that man drunk walking. He got him drunk against the ropes. Another one for Gonzalez. Another punch for Gonzalez. Can he get him out of there before the round ends? Now an elbow. Hammer fist and a fucking punch. He's going out the gas tank. Gonzalez trying to close the fucking show and get the fatality. But oh, so close. Ooh. Ooh. Kung Chai survived by the skin of his fucking teeth. His corner is immediately going to work. Holy shit. Gonzalez almost got him. Oh, he almost got him out of there. Gonzalez almost got him out of there. Too little too late. But Wow. I don't know how Kung Chai held on, man. Fuck. Crazy. Absolutely crazy. Let's see. Queer Street. Spaghetti Lay. Sub Cayman Rider. You got Jace's Pullman. I have Kung Chai after that, my dude. I have Kung Chai after that. Beautiful round right there for Kung Chai. That was just brilliant. That knockdown pretty much sealed it. Kung Chai... Almost became Kung Chai. Yeah, absolutely. Not Kung Chai. My bad, Gonzalez. I don't know why I said Kung Chai. I meant Gonzalez. Gonzalez took that round right there with the knockdown and almost getting Kung Chai out. You got to give it to Gonzalez. The momentum is actually in his corner right now. Uh, almost became Kung Chai. <laughs> so, Pullman, Gonzalez wins. Oh, yeah. Gonzalez, my bad. Round one. Got to give it to Gonzalez because he almost took him out of there. I don't know how much Kung Chai is left. Three piece for Gonzalez. Gonzalez going after him. One, two for Gonzalez. Oh. Oh, jab by Kung Chai. One different Kung Chai. Three piece for Gonzalez. Oh. High kick for Kung Chai. Good fucking hook for Gonzalez. Gonzalez trying to hunt him down. Good jab for Kung Chai, though. High kick for Kung Chai. Three piece for Gonzalez. Ref stepping in there to break it up. Oh, he's checking the glove. What is the ref doing? Ref, what are you doing? Why are you pulling on the glove of Kung Chai? Trying to fix it? What do for uh for Gonzalez? Now an elbow for Gonzalez. Now a knee for Kung Chai. Kung Chai throwing everything now. He's got Gonzalez backed up against the ropes. Oh, good jab for Kung Chai. Good hook for Kung Chai. High kick for Kung Chai. Trying to find his way back into this shit. Gonzalez hanging in there tough though with the jabs. Good jab by Gonzalez. Right hand by Gonzalez. Body shot by Kung Chai. Going to the body and the head. Good step in. Knee for Kung Chai. Now a hook to the body for Gonzalez. Damn. Straight left hand by Kung Chai. Back it up, Gonzalez. Another jab. Backs up, Gonzalez. Now an elbow behind the jab. God damn. Body kicking a jab by Kung Chai. Now Kung Chai with a three, four, five piece. Oh, he's just uh, low punches on this man here. Damn. Five, six, seven piece. Uppercuts and some hooks and an elbow. Fucking Gonzalez eating all the damn Spanish food. And he's still alive. Kicking the body by Kung Chai. That would hurt Gonzalez a bit. Gonzalez, a wounded animal. Kicking him to the body. Hitting him to the head. Elbow for Kung Chai. Jesus, what a round for him. Elbow for Gonzalez. But he rocked Kung Chai. Kung Chai now. He's getting oh, he's fucking hurt. Wounded animal shit. Wounded animal shit. Gonzalez trying to corner him. Good kick to the body by Kung Chai. He's trying to survive. Good hook by Gonzalez. Jab by Kung Chai lands. Good knee to the body. 
Holy shit, what a round. Now the ref's going to bring him away. Good jab by Kung Chai. High kick by Kung Chai. Three piece behind it. Uppercut hooks by Kung Chai. Good knee by Kung Chai. Shit. How is he alive? One, two by Kung Chai. One, two for Gonzalez now. Backs up Kung Chai. Getting to the body by Kung Chai. Look, Gonzalez tag up Kung Chai. Letting him with a three piece. Another hook by Gonzalez lands. Counter jabs for Kung Chai now. Elbow for Gonzalez. Elbow again for Gonzalez. Somehow he's still alive. Flying kick by Gonzalez. And now they're going to break away. My God. Fuck. What a round. Hook for Gonzalez. High kick for Kung Chai. Jab for Gonzalez. High kick for Kung Chai. One, two, three for Gonzalez. Hook for Gonzalez again. Now another knee to the body. Another knee to the body. And that is going to be the end of the fucking round. Fuck. The crowd is on their fucking feet right now. God damn. What a fight. See, Gonzalez wins. I want Spain guy to win. He's from camp. The famous to build wonderful uh, forward fighter with wonderful classic Muay Thai moves. My favorite says Fatata. He's, hey, he's doing a lot better than I thought he would. Xavier's having an amazing fight so far. You see Stevie Knight, the channel reality got KO'd and Misfit Circus Boxing. <laughs> Shit, that's how you know Circus Boxing falling off. They don't even want the free publicity no more. They don't want to see, nobody to see the embarrassment. Gonzalez, an angry man. Fatara, I liked him too. Savage Incorporated with a fight elbow. Kung Chai's Mankog ready, no doubt. Rice and beans. <laughs> Hold on, let's see. Beans and rice still killing it, no doubt. Oh my god, they don't they don't want to slow down. What a round. I agree, man. I think it's one to one. I think it's one to one. That's a tough round, but I think one to one right here. Both these guys are fighting with something. Fighting with something to prove here. Holy shit. Oh shit! The legs go out of Kung Chai early! And now Gonzalez going for the kill hook to the body! Oh one, two, three for Gonzalez! Oh! Oh, he's got Kung Chai and Zombie Mode drunk walking against the ropes! Kung Chai's about to fall. He's trying to throw back with everything he's got, but Gonzalez hunting him down. One, two for Gonzalez. Elbow for Gonzalez. Elbow for Kung Chai. How is he still alive? Kung Chai with a three piece, but a good jab by Gonzalez. Good hook by Gonzalez. Hook by Kung Chai. Counter hook by Gonzalez. He is walking him down. He's walking down Kung Chai. Kung Chai with a beautiful elbow. Beautiful elbow by Gonzalez. And now uppercuts three, four, five piece by Kung Chai. A beautiful spinning elbow. The straight elbow for Gonzalez. God. Damn. Push kick. This is fight of the fucking night. Oh my god. Gonzalez with a four piece. Kung Chai with a step in knee and a fucking. Oh my god. It's fucking step in elbow. Oh, good cross by Gonzalez. Good hook by Gonzalez. Hook by Kung Chai. Three piece by Kung Chai. Gonzalez pushing him against the ropes. Ref getting in there. Fuck. This is the fight of the fucking card right here. Hook for Gonzalez, another one, two for Gonzalez. And the blood just sprayed all over the camera. Somebody's blood just spattered on the camera. <laughs> that is wild. Three piece for Kung Chai, high kick for Kung Chai, elbow for Kung Chai, one, two for Gonzalez. How are these guys alive? How is nobody dead yet? Gonzalez getting tagged up. He getting tagged up, and now he's walking forward on Kung Chai, and now he's a tie up with him against the ropes. Oh my god. This is insanity. Oh, push kick for Kung Chai, and he backs up Gonzalez with it. High kick for Kung Chai, and a jab. Good hook for Kung Chai. Body kick for Kung Chai. Gonzalez with a hook. Both tied up and kneeing each other in the body. Ref getting in there. Oh, uppercut misses for Kung Chai, but an elbow for Kung Chai. Lands flush. Body kick for Kung Chai, and a jab. Hook to the body for Gonzalez. Hook to the head and a beautiful right hand by Gonzalez. Tied in immediately, going with a knee up against the ropes in a tight clinch. Good jab again. Oh, good counter by Kung Chai. Kung Chai with a counter. Gonzalez with a counter. Rock him, sock him. Robots with the punches and the elbows from both. Leaping knee now for Kung Chai. Steps in with it after the leaping one. And now they tie up right up against the ropes. Everybody in Lumpany Stadium is standing the fuck up. They are ready for this shit. They are going crazy in there. Four piece for Kung Chai. Kicking him to the body. Now it's Kung Chai. High kick for Kung Chai. Blocked by Gonzalez. The fans are going insane. That leaping knee by Gonzalez. Not successful as he falls to his back. Ten seconds to go. High kick for Kung Chai. High kick for Kung Chai. Let's flush. 
Right after the second one, uh, the first one got blocked. One, two for Gonzalez! That one hurt Gonzalez! There's the end of the fight. Damn. What a fight. What a fight. Jesus. Both go to the hospital, no doubt. More push-ups. Let's see how they finish the fight without a single uh, counter beyond me. Same here. I don't get it, man. These guys are made of fucking metal. My God. Black guys for a month. Off to the hospital they go. Fight of the weekend. Suicide mode. Fuck, man. What a battle. What a battle. It does not get any better than that. I don't know if it gets any better than that, folks. That is... Whew. God damn, what a fucking war. That is a war and a half. And we're not even at the co-made event yet. My God. War and a half. That shit was unreal. It really was, brother. Unreal shit, bro. Oh, my God. All right, let's see who gets this official decision, my people. Whew. The winner, majority decision, Kong Jai! Ah, oh, that's heartbreaking for Gonzalez, bro. He almost finished Kong Jai. Kong Jai basically got a decision for surviving and fighting back. Damn. I give him credit for surviving in the end. He, he earned at least a bonus, but damn, Gonzalez fumbled the bag there. He did. Should have got him out when he had the chance, but that just shows how tough Kong Chai is. Give them both a bonus, though. Both of them deserve a bonus. Give one to Kong Chai, give one to Xavier, and bring them both back. Bring them both back. I want to see Xavier, and I want, of course, Kong Chai going to be back, but bring Xavier back, damn it. Was that his debut in here? Was that his debut? Yes, it was. In one, it was. Bring him back. I've seen enough to where I want to see him back. Bangkok bias says it came in. I think there might be some there, brother. I think it might be. Gonzalez better get a bonus. He better get one, bro. If they're going to give one to Kung Chai, you got to give one to Xavier, bro. There absolutely could be a Bangkok bias in that, in that judging. I could absolutely see that. And they said majority decision, too. Not even unanimous. A majority. He got jobbed out there. Man. What a fight. He only 21. Bonus. He got a house. Definitely. Give. Please give one to Gonzalez. Oh, wait. Hold up. Hold up. Yes. They gave him a bonus. Let's go. Both men get it. Gonzalez 100% earned that one. Give him a bonus too. That's that's the second fight in a row where both got both fighters got a bonus. That's what the fuck I'm talking about. This is high level, like in terms of striking, ladies and gentlemen, pure striking. This is as high level and as savage as it gets. I'm not talking MMA rules. I just mean striking rules. This is as this and bare knuckle. This and bare knuckle. Two of the most violent. Of them all. Because this is some crazy shit. Gotta give them bonuses right there. Honselec and Coco are up next. Honselec and Coco. More tie on tie violence. The only foreigner we've seen on the main card was a Spaniard. Everybody else has been tie on tie. This was the main prelim. Sex on to Sean Clancy. They better run that one back too. The doctor fucked over Clancy right there. But it's been tie on tie violence this entire main card. Unanimous decision. Unanimous decision. Another decision. And of course a majority. You would think it's boring. But no. Every fight is a war. These guys are made of metal. The only type of fight where these. Where, the only type of card where the fights could go to decision. And every fight will be entertaining. Hunselec is 17. That's crazy as shit. Let me see this man's record. He walking out to a banger. 17 years old, 5'4 from Thailand. Team Busdek 
Dexin, Bustekin. And look at this. Already beat uh, a Coco by unanimous decision in Friday fights number six. And Pet Bun Rai, he beat by decision in the first Friday fight. I believe, oh no, he already fought Coco. So this is a rematch. I thought this was a different Coco. No, so he, him and Coco have already fought. And this is, and he beat him by unanimous decision. For Coco, let's see Coco. Five foot five, a little taller, 26 years old, much older. Only has one fight in one championship, and that was the loss to Hunt Select. So they're giving him a rematch. They're running it back. Muay Thai, most violent of all MMA. Absolutely. It's, it, it, it really is, bro. That and bare knuckle. Muay Thai and bare knuckle, they're up there, bro. In terms of stand-up striking, it's crazy. Uh, let's see. We know it's disrespect. Got John Jones and I were wrestler. Yep, technically he is. College years, I believe, uh, was when he was, yeah, had his uh, college years there in Iowa. No, Connor McTappen in 1FC, who acts his fights, no doubt. And now we have Coco. Oh, no, Hunselek now walking out. I thought that was Hunselek, but no, that was Coco. Now we have Hunselek making his way out there. It's crazy that this guy's only 17 years old, making a big impact. See, he's from New York. Yep, he is from New York originally. 17 versus 26. And I wonder what his full-on record is at 17. I know it's got to be it's got to be pretty deep, I imagine. And making life-changing money at that age already. By the way, he's already been labeled Prospect of the Year in Muay Thai. I believe last year he was Prospect of the Year was Hunt Select. Which is actually pretty damn good. Yeah, I'm eager to hear what his record is. Last fight they had was a banger, says Fatata. That makes sense as to why they were running back then. I was about to say, their first fight had to be a banger. So I imagine this shit going to be a banger too. This will be pretty crazy. By the way, he's getting a loud fucking chance in there. They are ready for him. See, I believe my friend actually met Jones in person when he was wrestling. Since came in Ryder, that's pretty cool. Uh, see, I've said New York, six six for seven, absolutely. This motherfucker definitely is the favorite in there compared to Coco. Coco got a good little reception, but it's def it's definite that the prospect is there. Let's see, there's lying. He's not seventy. <laughs> He's obviously twenty five. Parents twenty. Parents lie like Albert Pujols. Well, you have to remember. This guy's been fighting out of the womb, so even though he's 17, he's going to look like he's 47. <laughs> that motherfucker actually look, looks more like 37 in that photo of anything. Uh, John Jones training harder now he's gone, that he was for gone. Now we have our AI announcer ready to give us our co-main event. So Coco's record officially is training out of Source of My. 80 and 19 for Coco. God damn, a 26. 80 and 19 at 26 is crazy. So this is his... This is fight number 100 for him. Oh, shit. 99 fights before this is a fight number 100. I have to give it to Muay Thai for BKFC. Elbow strike, you must brutal. That is true, Amway. 72 and 20 for Hunt Select. So 92 for Hunt Select, 100 for Coco. Interesting. Not bad. But you're right, though. Definitely when you throw in the knees and the elbows, it definitely does take it up a level compared to BKFC because BKFC is all knuckles and fists. But you're absolutely right. Here we go, folks. They touch gloves. And here we go. Round number one, Hunt Select and Coco. Round one. They touch gloves, and now here we go. This is our co-main event, everybody. After this course is our main event of the day. Good high kick by Coco. Or by Hunsa, like I should say. Ref warning him, saying you better be active. Low kick now by Coco. High kick by Hunsa, like. Low kick for Coco. Ref saying, come on, fight. I kick for Hunselec. Kick to the body by Coco. 
Oh, kick to the body by Hunt Select. Able to catch it as Coco with a nice elbow with it. I'm going to have to him to fight on. 205 to go. Good jab now by Hunt Select. Kick to the body by Hunt Select is there. Coco standing right in front of him. Good high kick by Hunt Select. Good counter by Coco. Hunt Select with a high kick. Hunt Select with a body kick. Coco I like he wanted to catch it, but he couldn't. Coco trying to press forward there. Good jab by Coco. He whipped the head of Hunt Select all the way back. Hunt Select got them hands up high, though. Able to recover. Hunt Select only 17 years old. Coco 26. Good jab by Coco. This is their rematch. Running it back. This one is a banger in the making. Good kick to the body by Hunt Select. Good kick to the body by Hunt Select. Oh, low blow? Uh, yeah, low blow, but I think they're gonna, yeah, they're gonna let it go. They're gonna let it go. Good kick right there for Coco. Hunt Select goes to the body. Good jab by Hunt Select. Good elbow by Hunt Select off the back foot. It ties up with Coco. And they wriggle away 40 seconds ago. Good jab by Hunt Select. Good jab by Coco. Good jab by Hunt Select. Now they tie up a good knee to the body. Ref gonna jump in there. Good jab by Hunt Select. They're being patient as hell right now. Good push kick by Coco. Push kick by Hunt Select is there. Ten seconds to go. Hunt Select, I like when it's pressed for a... Oh, good little push kick by Hunt Select. Good counter by Coco. And there is the end of the round. Good start to the round right there. Pretty be I'd say being patient is Coco. Gonna give the slight edge to Hunt Select because Coco was being awful patient, but still very close first round. Measuring each other, feeling each other out, you know what I mean? Having a good time with it. By the way, shout out to everybody across the world. North America, South America, Africa, Europe, Asia, Australia, and of course, Antarctica. It is good to see you all here. Oh, and of course, Oceania, as well as Australia. Oceania. Hope you guys are having a good time. And remember, I will be live tomorrow for the big triple header. That is Glory 85. The one-man tournament and Mirthal Groanhearts return. UFC Song vs. Simon. And then, of course, BKFC with two with four beautiful fights at the top. Ben Rothwell, Beck Rawlings. Of course, Mendez Alvarez, co-main event. Chad Mendez, Eddie Alvarez. Then, of course, the main event being Luke Rockhold and Mike Perry. Good to see you, two joints. Hope you're doing well. Shout out to you out there in Canada. Here we go, folks. Round number two. Good push kick by Hunsuk. Hunsuk. The kind of a kick by Coco and a good counter. Good stuff right there. Good high kick by Hunsuk. Another kick by Hunsuk. Good one, two by Coco. Coco tying up with Hunsuk. They tie up the ref. Separates. Puts him back in. Is Overeem going to be cleared anytime soon? I believe the suspension is up in October, and uh, he'll be in the Glory Kickboxing Heavyweight Grand Prix in December. That's that's what they're targeting, I believe. At least the last time I read, that's what they're targeting. So October of this year, he'll be eligible. He's still serving that suspension from when the Dutch Commission drug tested him like a bunch of idiots. Good low kick for Coco. Low kick for Onselec. Uh Nisi and Bad Glory. Oh, yeah. Oh, damn, good knock on that round to the leg, but wait, Coco held on to the legs, and no, the ref didn't give him a standing eight count. That might have been a knockdown, but I think because Coco held on to the legs, his knees didn't touch, but he was definitely dropped, holy shit. One, two, now for Hunselec. Hunselec going on the hunt. Coco, the only reason Coco was not called knockdown was because he held on to the legs before he dropped. That was crazy, he wrapped around the man before he fell. That's insane. No knockdown scored. That was crazy reflexes right there. Good one, too, by Coco. Coco saved his own ass right there. Barely saved his own ass. 
That was crazy. A crazy sequence right there. Good kick to the body by Hunselek. Good one, two by Coco. Good high kick by Hunselek. Good jab right there by Hunselek. And now Hunselek pushing him right over into the ropes. The ref getting his damn knee involved to separate him. Good one, two again for Coco. Good knee by Hunselek. Good knee by Coco. Knee by Hunselek and Coco lands in the clinch. Now both going to break away. Good knees for both. Oh, shit. Now they're tied up again. He went for a high single or something. Yeah, he fucking like, got dropped and like level changed. <laughs> Did a fucking uh, MMA level change right there. That shit was funny. They're on them knees right now. It's Hunselek. Both going for knees. His range is Coco. <laughs> Definitely. Oh, shit. Good elbows now for Coco and Hunselek. Hunselek with a knee. Good knee for Coco. Knee for Hunselek. Ref going to jump in there with his knee and separate him. Gonna say fight. Good high kick for Hunselek. Push kicks for Coco. Jab for Coco. Jab for Hunselek. 17 seconds to go. Ref tying up. Saying separate. 10 seconds to go. Push kick by Hunselek. Good jab for Hunselek. They tie up immediately. Ref separating them. And there's the end of the round. Round two wrapped up. Good to see the animal room filling up. A lot of cool people. A lot of cool people. UFC Vancouver looks good aside for the main event for fuck's sake. Yeah, they fucked you guys over on that, man. I don't know why they... Um, I don't know why they gave you that main event. Nobody wants to see Pena and Nunez Part 3. I think 2 was enough, so I'm right there with you, bro. They fucked y'all over on that main event. We're all gonna... We're, we're gonna need something more powerful. Yeah, look at that. Hunter like by the way, did get the knockdown. The problem is, though... Uh, Fucking uh, Coco's ass landed on the ropes, and then he wrapped up like he was going for a single leg, so he saved himself from getting knocked down because of that. That was hilarious. That's crazy. Got to visit Canada soon. I definitely do, man. Vancouver is a city I want to visit. A lot of pretty Asian women there, from what I understand, in Vancouver. I'm talking about that earlier, two joints. Hell yeah, man. Now they're right back up. Off the stool are both men. And here we go, round three. We getting it, folks. Round three. We got to have hard, Jay. They definitely did two joints. You guys deserve better than Nunez and Pena. I don't like that main event at all. For Vancouver, they should have given you something way better than that. Good one, two for Hunselek. Good jabs by Coco. Now Hunselek ties up with him. And what the fuck? Coco lifted up Hunselek like Hunselek was going for a uh, Rene choke there. Good team kick to the body for Hunselek. That just backed up Coco. Coco back on the hunt. Good jab by Coco. Damn, he almost whipped his head all the way back. Ref getting in there. Ref getting in there. Separate him. 220 to go. High kicks now for Hunselek. Push kick for Hunselek is there. Kick to the body for Hunselek. Hunselek tying up with him. Ref getting in there. Toronto, beautiful Montreal. Absolutely. Italians, glad to see you're still on. Hell yeah, Zach. Gotta go full throttle, my brother. You know the drill, my dude. Oh, shit. Good ones and twos. Good tying up. I love these fights, man. The, these fights are fucking amazing. And it's crazy how sometimes these just shit all over some UFC cards at times. It's so crazy. Good break away. Right back in the center. Happy Friday, everybody. Heading back to work. Hell yeah, brother. Have a good day at work, my dude. Hey, tomorrow's going to be the real party, though, Zach. It's it's going to be so much fun. I can't wait. This is my card of the day. I'm sure everybody's card of the day right here. I mean, just Mendez Alvarez and then just Mike Perry and Luke Rockhold. Rockhold's going to get fucking destroyed, I think. Perry's going to beat the ten, about 10 shades of shit out of that, man. One fifteen to go in the fight. I can't wait for that. I am super excited for it. Probably the probably the one fight I'm most looking forward to is Perry and Rockhold. Like, out of all the fights tomorrow, that's the one I'm most looking forward to. Good elbow for Hunselet. Good elbow for Coco. Good knees for both. Tight little clinch there. Now they separate. That ref had to get his whole fucking leg in there to do it. Push kick by Hunselet. Kick to the body by Hunselet. Good elbows by Coco and Hunselet. Knee by Hunselet. 
Ref just prying them apart now. Needs a damn crowbar to get these two off of each other. Good high kicks for both. Good elbow for Coco. He caught his fucking ass. Kick. He caught him slipping with that elbow. Ref says fight. 20 seconds to go. Good elbow. Good elbow. Good knee strike. Ooh! Coco slipped and fell. I think Coco's head hit the ground. 10 seconds to go. Yeah, Coco look a little slow now. Good knee there, Mahon Select. Coco got fucking dumped right there. Oh shit. <laughs> oh man, I know I know his back's gonna hurt after that shit. Good co main event. Good co main event. Not bad. After this, folks, Jean Select and Chorfa are going to wrap up this beautiful card. Good to see all the homies hanging out today. Hope everybody around the world is having an awesome day so far. And remember, be beautiful triple header tomorrow. Triple, possibly triple header of the year. We have a one night heavyweight tournament in glory. Justin Willness and Asaro. By the way, Asaro is my pick to win the heavyweight tournament in glory tomorrow. I think it'll be Willness. These two are going to fight it out. Bosnia and Turkey. Oh, these two guys, uh, one Dutchman in Wilness and a Nigerian in Asaro. I think the Nigerian wins. Uh, the other two in the tournament, the man from Turkey and the other guy from Bosnia. Oh, I'll get to this in a minute. Hold up. Judges rule it. Favor of the winner. By unanimous decision. Who you got? Hunselek? Yes, Hunselek. Hunselek gets it. That's the right call. No controversy there. Good fight with him and Coco. Coco fought well. I wouldn't give him a bonus, but he fought all right. Up next, everybody, is our main event, our final fight. Uh, up in the glory card, filler fight. Oh, Michael Dude. This is the guy that Tyrone Spong knocked out in a fun fight. Maybe he'll put on a fun fight here. And then, other the, the tournament final is going to be the main event, but this is the co-main event. Myrtle Groanheart is going to try to get the belt back from Semelier. Myrtle Groanheart is Cedric Dumbay's most hated rival. I believe he even beat Cedric during the little rivalry. And then, of course, we have this mid-UFC card. This is mid-tier. I'm not even going to lie to y'all. Not even going to lie. That main card is, ugh. This is in the apex, too. I mean, ugh, that is rough. That is real rough. Kyle Barillo is the co-main event. He's boring as hell. But that's a filler card right there. And then, of course, we have our event of the day, BKFC 41 in Colorado, headlined by Mike Perry and Luke Rockhold tomorrow, light heavyweight. It's going to be a fun day, everybody. We're going to be starting at 2 p.m. Eastern time with Glory. So Glory's main card starts at 2, so I'll start then. Uh, if you want a link to that show, look at the top of the, uh, of the animal room. I have it pinned to the top up there. So you can go ahead, leave your like, and get ready for tomorrow's show. That'll be the next time I am live. And uh, the fun's only beginning, man. We have a lot of good fights coming up. A lot of good fights coming up. Not just this month, but in general. Oh, shit. It is officially uh, Y Crew time, and there is some woman that is yelling. Oh, wow. We're getting Y Crew. We're not even getting... We're not even getting walkouts? <laughs> That is funny. That is funny. So Chorfa and Jin Select don't even get separate walkouts. They're just going to get a Y crew out of nowhere. <laughs> That's funny. SCJ, you're mispronouncing Grown Heart very bad, saying Grown Heart. Or Growing Heart. Well, no, it's Grown Heart. I know it's Grown Heart. It might have sounded like Growing Heart, but that's because I'm pronounced. That's because I said it really fast. But I know it's Grown Heart. And wow, we don't even get walkouts for these two. Are, are they even going to announce who they are or record or anything? Okay, let's see if they're going to even... I think they're going to give them announcements. They didn't give them any walkouts, or at least if they did, they fucking just fast-forwarded through, through it all. Okay, we are. Okay, that was weird. They just, like, teleported in the ring, and all of a sudden we just got a white crew out of, out of nowhere, which is crazy. So who's first? Okay, Chorfa. Who, by the way, needs to get a fucking win. 101 and 4. 
Well, 101 of 44 for Chorfa, so this is fight number 146. Got a split decision win. Some people said it was very close. At two losses in a row, though. So he's trying to get a fucking win streak going. Fijin Salek. Got to get himself a win. He's the one that really needs a win. Because he got knocked the fuck out in round two by Kong Thorny. And I think that was a main event, too. Funny enough. I think that was also a main event. Here we go, folks. They're bringing both men to the center. This is officially our main event, folks. Here we go, folks. Round number one. Really, these main events should be five rounds, but fuck it. I'll take it. Round one at a catchway to 132. Another catchway fight. Oh, good job by Chorfa at the gate. Into the body by Chorfa. Oh, good four-piece there by Jinselec. Jesus. Low kick by Jinselec. Jing Sang Lek is throwing heat. Chorfa throwing a low kick. Push kick by Jing Sang Lek. Oh, good high kick by Jing Sang Lek. Oh, good push kick. Oh, good four-piece by Jing Sang Lek. He's got one uh, cut into the back of his head, haircut style. A low kick for Chorfa. Good jab for Jing Sang Lek. A low kick for Chorfa. Kick to the body for Jing Sang Lek. Jesus, just strike for strike. Push kick for Jing Sang Lek. If you want to say it correctly, you need to say Grunhart. I know it's pronounced... I've heard it, I've heard it pronounced Grunhart than Grunhart, so... It's probably going to be one or the other. One is pronounced like O oh, in Dutch. Yeah, that's what I figured. I just know the uh, Eng I just know the English pronunciation of it. Good low kick by Chorfa. Because I know in I know in uh, the Netherlands or in Dutch it sounds a little different. Good kick to the body by Chorfa. Good jab by Jing Sang Lek. Oh, good jab by Jing Sang Lek again. And Chorfa fucking leaned up against the robes after that. Almost ate it. High kick by Jing Sang Lek. Elbow by fucking Chorfa. He's going right after him. Jinx saying like he's going right after him. Oh shit, did he kick out a part of the ring? Yeah, he did. He kicked out one of those foam little pads there at the corner. And now Chorfa going on the hunt. Push kick by Chorfa. Kick to the body by Chorfa. One, two, three by Chorfa. But a good combo by Jinx saying like. I kick by Jinx saying like. And a low kick by Chorfa. Push kick by Chorfa. Good kick to the body by Chorfa. Right hand by Chorfa. Kick to the body by Chorfa. Good kick to the body by Chorfa again. He's making he's making it have to go for it. Good jab to the body. And they're right back up. Good kick to the body and a good jab by Jing Sing Lek. Good jab by Chorfa. High kick by Chorfa. Push kick by Jing Sing Lek. Three piece by Jing Sing Lek. Ten seconds to go. Good jab by Jing Sing Lek. Chorfa goes to kick to the body. Good elbow by Chorfa. And there's the end of the round. There it is. First round might have to go to Jing Sang Lek. He tested the chin of Chorfa there. Backed him up all the way. Might have to give that one to Jing Sang Lek. Two more months. I get a two-year behedge. Oh, shit. You're coming up on it. Let's see. He's Dutch. Yes, he is Dutch. He, hey, he could be the face of the welterweight division. And honestly, he should, considering he was the rival of Cedric Dumbe. I believe it was 2-1 to one before Dumbe left, funny enough. So, this is his chance to get the throne at Welterweight. Amsterdam going in the next eight years. 55-60s traveling personified. Absolutely. It is interesting that, uh, that Gronhart is finally back. Because I think, uh, I think he, he went on a short little run in MMA for a little bit. And I thought maybe he was going to pursue Cedric. But he's like, nah, fuck it. I'll go back to Glory and get my crown. Man, it's smart because the way the welterweight division is right now, uh, Grunar could definitely take it. 
Here we go. Round number two. Oh, good jab now for Jinxing Lick. Good high kick by Jinxing Lick. It's over. Oh, it's over. just got knocked the fuck out by a beautiful head kick. It took two of them and it's over. It is over. Jinxing Lick just knocked the short fuzzy fuck out. Oh, my God. That head kick put him down and out for the count. Fuck. It took two of those fucking things to put him out. The first one had him on skates, and the second one completely shut him out. Oh, my God. Oh, shit. That is fucking knockout of the car. God damn. That head kick was disgusting. Oh. First one hurt him. Second one. Oh, shut the lights out. Fuck. Oh. Fuck. Oh. Damn. Out cold. Out cold. Yeah, he ain't getting up for that. Oh, my God. Wait for it. What up, I'm Dante? He kicked his fucking head off, bro. Oh, my God. Let's see. Let's take a fork in him. He's done. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit. He kicked his head off. He did, bro. That's finish of the main card. Holy shit. 13 seconds in the second round. Oh, my God. Shut that man's fucking lights out. Oh, my God. What a knockout. What a knockout. Fuck. Fucking sent Shorfa straight to purgatory with that. Oh, my God. That's got to be knockout of the... Maybe of the card? Maybe? Definitely knockout of the main card. Because, yeah, unanimous decision. Let's see. Majority, unanimous. Uh, unanimous. Unanimous. TKO. Eh, that was kind of a fluke one. We need to see a run back of that. Unanimous. Majority. Unanimous. <laughs> Jesus. So, every fight was a decision. Every fight went to the cards... Only one that did not was the main event that ended in a knockout. Give that man a fucking bonus. 100%. Give him a fucking bonus. Jesus. There it is. Much deserved. The only knockout on the card. I'm actually surprised. I felt like we saw one already, but no. We just saw a lot of people go to war pretty much. Just go to battle. Holy fuck. Absolutely insane, man. Absolutely insane. What a battle. Let's see. Let's put that back up. There we go. That's why they were the main event. Absolutely. Saving the best for last and saying saving the only kill for last. That is amazing. Got, got to give them the bonus for that. Damn good fights, though, all across the board. Hun Select with a big win. Kung Chai got a win with Gonzalez. Both got a bonus. Sanfoon had a, had a, had a good win. Nam Serene with a good win. Uh, Chapit Chit with a good win. These two need to run it back. Sexon and Clancy. Because Clancy was on his way to coming back until that cut stopped everything. Well, technically it's a finish, but it's not like an actual knockout, of course, like the main event. Uh, unanimous decision, of course... A mini pour with that beautiful war with Ferrari. Shalarm with Sedegi. Shalarm got the win there. Lisa with the fucking war with Vera in a very good fight. Dave, unanimous decision in the bathroom break MMA fight. And then Jalil got a unanimous decision in a good fight to start things off. And folks, I will see you all tomorrow for a beautiful glory card featuring the heavyweight tournament. And then, of course, uh, Semelier versus Grunhardt for the welterweight championship of the world. Uh, we have Fight Night, Song, and Simon, of course, at 4 o'clock. Very mid-UFC card. And then, of course, we have BKFC tomorrow night as well. So we have BKFC, of course, uh, Perry and Rockhold, Song, Simon, uh, Grunhardt, Semelier, and then, of course, the heavyweight tournament. Uh, so I will see you all tomorrow for that. It's going to be a wild day, but a fun day. 
and I am, hey, I'm glad you guys are able to join me for it. Enjoy the rest of your days today, everybody. I will see you all tomorrow, definitely, man. See you later, Pullman. Appreciate you stopping by. And, of course, you too, and William. Have yourselves, have, have, have yourself a good one. Everybody, have yourselves a good day today. I appreciate you all for hanging out. I will be here tomorrow for glory, BKFC, and the UFC. It's going to be a fun day tomorrow, a full day, but a fun day. I'm going to start at 2 p.m. Eastern Time uh, with Glory, with Grunhardt and Semelier in the heavyweight tournament at 2 o'clock p- uh, Eastern Time. Then we're going to cruise into the UFC, and then we cruise into BKFC at 8 o'clock. So full day tomorrow, full slate tomorrow. Uh, I will see you guys then. Until then, I'm gone. <laughs>